So, to tell the story, we have first to create this base of sound and meaning of sound in order that the story gets a logic, no? because otherwise it just becomes another story. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> nowhere else on the planet uh, we have heard any time, or I've heard any time, that every individual sound has a meaning which is based on the nature around it. And uh, this is actually the key to all this saga and all this mythology, which in the same time through sound explains, of course, these figures and that what they represent, these mythological figures. So all around the planet we have mythology and we find out that most mythologies are quite similar. You know? If you look to the Greek mythology or you look to the Roman mythology or the Hindu mythology, they all represent different, ide different figures who uh, are, are different ideal. They give different ideal to people. And we can see there are many similarities, um, but we don't really know anymore exactly what their meaning was. No? So today we relate to them as to all kinds of different God people were believing in before. But if we go in this root sound system, we can see that these different figures in all these different mythologies actually represent always the same uh, the same character and these characters we will explain uh, in the next couple of days we have uh, a lot of time to sit down and talk and we can go through all these figures but then base them all on sound so that we can really see that yes this Shiva in Hindustan it means actually quite the same it's exactly the same as this Jupiter in, uh, in, in Rome no? for example as he is representing this Wijnemönen uh, from the Finnish mythology. So we first do this, uh, we first do this alphabet, yeah, and we give a little bit example there. Uh, we make the meaning of this sound and uh, try to, I will explain these associations because they are of course in root language and I don't know who of you uh, understands root language, but uh, we have to explain all this figure and this uh, different name so that we get the right association in the head. Uh, so that we can go based on these associations through all this story. Now this root language consists of 29 sounds and there every sound has a meaning and this language has one alphabet and this alphabet starts with uh, this alphabet consists of 23 sounds that go in one ring and outside of that ring there are six more sounds and we will explain all of them. So we first go in this 23 sound that go in a ring and there at 12 o'clock we find the sound E. And E is one pole with one dot on top. This pole we have all in our trousers and this dot that we have on top in the mark of the sound is the sperm that is coming out from that pole. This E is representing the Trisul. So the Trisul we find all over the planet in different character. Yeah, we know uh, Shiva with one Trisul, uh, Jupiter has the Trisul. Different figures around the planet are representing the Trisul. But when we know uh, this uh, Trisul is actually representing uh, a tree of people living together on the planet and we have one character who represents all this oak tree that the human being belong to who is the main character of this oak tree in which all these fruit are hanging that represent uh, the sperm on this planet the fruit of the oak tree uh, we call in root language Orlon and we have all men on the planet have this Orlon so the Orlon in the oak tree in the symbolic um, is presenting all the sperm on the planet so we all belong to one enormous sperm tree this oak tree and the main character of that uh, he holds as a symbol a trisul um, a trisul is what we in English call a trident 
yeah, and it makes uh, in a symbolic uh, letter V with this pole. Yeah, so it's a pole with like a V around. Yeah, but this mark we don't use as a separate mark for the sound, like we have it, for example, in the Dutch language, we use it, yeah? Like for water, we use this mark W, we call it, yeah? But W is no sound. Yeah, w, it is a combination of double and U. And I don't know what they mean with that. No? It doesn't exist in this root alphabet sound system. Um, so it's only a symbolic thing. It anyway represents this E, which is this uh, Alphader that we had before on the planet, from whose sperm all other people on the planet are born. The second sound that goes in that ring is the sound A. And the sound A means Aser, Uko and Akka. Now, the Aser are the people who live in Udenma, a ringland at the North Pole before ice time. So we had in that time a different North Pole than we have today. Um, in that time, the axle of the Earth was perpendicular in relation to the Sun, what makes that the North Pole has 24 hour light and the South Pole has 24 hours light. And around that North Pole there was a ringland with a diameter of about 240-250 km where the Sun never set because the, earth, uh, the axle of the Earth is straight in relation to the Sun and the Earth is turning and turning and going around the Sun. At the equator of course 12 hour day, 12 hour night so the more you went south or north the more um, the more light you got, no? Now in that time the South Pole was in the water. So, um, Udenma at the North Pole, there actually was a land where the word Ma again means land and the word Uden means the sun. So Udenma in that translation is the sun land. Now the exact that in that ringland at the North Pole, Udenma lived uh, two class of people who speak root language. Uh, these people are called the Aser, who create for people in ringlands outside of Udenma another language but based on the same sound. So the root language has 29 sounds and now they take this individual sound and put them together in one way that they could construct a language which is much bigger than this original natural root language that these first people on the planet got. No? We will come to that later on. Uh, first we go through the sound now. So we have there, under this Aser, two characters who are, are representing the main figure in the story. No? There is one masculine figure and one uh, female figure. And now these two, Uko and Akka, represent the grandfather and grandmother in this family of Aser who live inside Udenma. So also the sound A become put to this two highest character that we have on the planet, one man, one woman, and uh, this Aser in Udenma. So the sound A can mean all this Aser in Udenma, but in the same time Uko on the masculine side and Akka for all the female side. So there are actually three meanings in this association. Yeah? One together as Aser and one the father figure, the grandfather figure and the grandmother figure. The next sound is B. And B is a combination sound of B and A. Yeah. So the sound B is not a clear sound like the sound E and the sound A. E and A are clear sound. You can make all the time E and you can make all the time A, but you can't make all the time b. No? So B it's a combination sound, yeah, of two language, a consonant. 
Uh, the sound B means Bori or Burg, uh, castle is the association to that word. And this Borg, Burg is one castle that was, one Burg that was situated on seven islands. Uh, it's two class of people who speak root language and the Baner outside, they speak um, Baan language which is based on the sound of this root language but um, there I get a little bit through each other now uh, these Ban people they consist of three class of people where the highest one are the Yal and the Yal are represented by the sound Yi the next sound is Ko and Ko has again a new combination sound, the sound of k with o. And the sound ko means karler. And the karler are the next class of people inside this ringland, outside of Udenma. So there we have the jaal and the kaal, yi and ko. The next sound is l. And l is a and l. L means lag. And lag means uh, in English also law, uh, it also stands for logic, and lag is also one team, in English we would say one team. So one team of people, they can, in the root language, you can be in one lag, yeah, in one football's lag, in one football team. You know? So lag, law, logic are the association to the sound L. After that we come to M, a combination of A and M. <clears throat> and M means Mone, and Mone means the moon. Then we have N, and N means Noordscherna, and Noordscherna means in root the same for us as North Star, and uh, stands exactly over that pole in the north, so also this dot on this E makes us an association to Noordscherne, to North Star, and um, is also a symbol for knowledge. Like still in English today, we say knowledge, but you write knowledge. Yeah, you put, you can put all this mark as you like, but the sound knowledge anyway starts with N. No? The next sound is U, and U is a ring, again a clear sound. Ooh, a clear sound that means Uden. And Uden is the sun, and Uden is also everything. So the symbol for U it means the nature in its totality, Uden, but also the sun. Uh, they say uh, Uden is a ring, Uden is everything. Yeah, so it's two associations. If you look to the sun, you can also see one white ring around it. Notice maybe if you look in the middle of the day, it's a little bit strong, but in the morning when the sun comes up, or a little bit in, later on in the evening when it goes more down, when you look into the sun, you can see one white ring that goes around it. So it's symbolizing uh, this ring, the sound U, U then. The next sound is P, and P means pole. Uh, pole means the pole from North Pole to South Pole. Um, the pole around which this earth is turning, but also again this pole, what every man has in his trousers. We have also this part, pole. Next sound is Q, and Q means quadrat, and is the symbol for mathematics. Now, the symbol Q, this letter Q, is made out of a ring, and when you put one pole in the middle of that ring, that ring will cast one shadow. So you get two-dimensionally from ring and pole um, the letter Q. So we have U, P, Q is following in that logic out of the sound of U then and pole, which makes this shadow and cast it in that ring and creates Q, the sound Q. 
um, Q relates all to all form of mathematics because all mathematics is based on ring and pole in this system. The next sound is R and R means Ra and Ra is in the sperm. It's one part of the sperm which we call Ra. Um, Ra has as a symbol also uh, moon and also rose. Rose is also uh, a red rose. Every man has this red rose in his trousers and from this rose come the sperm and is also a symbol for Ra. It's a king symbol. The king uh, used many times his rose symbol. The next sound is S, and S means soul. S is a combination of A and S. Um, soul means again sun. So we have Uden, what is sun, but also everything what comes outside of sun. But the sound S represents soul, only soul. T is a combination of T and A, and T means Tour and tour, uh, we already talked about a little bit before. Tour means the heart and is masculine and feminine. Oo, oorsprung. It's one sound what exists only in this root language. I have a little difficult to make it automatic. It's one sound what I heard only in Udenma, in this region in the south of Finland where they produce it. We say uh, it is represented by a horseshoe. U and U means oorsprung origin. Everything is coming out of one oorsprung. And then this ring system of sound finishes with V. And V is again a combination of V and A. And V means Waner, the people who live outside of Udenma. So we have Aser inside, Waner outside, one E in between and one alphabet that goes round in one ring. E, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, U, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, I, A, B, C. So they go round in one ring. Now outside of that ring are six more. X, U, Z, O, E, E. X, is a symbol for tour, but consists of three sounds actually. Yeah? The sound A, the sound Ko, and the sound S. Aix. Now Aix means oak tree. So Aix means belonging to oak tree. Yeah? Something is from me, it's... Uh, no, you don't say that in English. Uh, it's from you, then it's yours. Yeah? You put this S behind in certain form to show that it belongs to you. So Aix means like it belongs to the oak tree. Um, they are more symbolic, this mark that comes now. The next one is U, and U is what you in English call Y, yeah, Y, uh, and U means Yggdrasil, and Yggdrasil is a mythological tree, uh, the world tree, the tree of all living things. All living things belong to Yggdrasil. The next sound is Seta, and Seta, um, Seta is one act. Seta uh, is one symbol. We will keep it a little bit simple. Seta is like a flash between human being, between two people. Yeah, you flash on somebody. You know? So it's one feeling thing. X U Seta uh, O E U are again clear sounds. O is meaning river. Uh, or stream and is the sound for the masculine because from the masculine comes the stream the sperm from which all people are born so in the root language you use the sound O for one river yeah, one uh, river floating in the landscape but in the symbolic of the mythology it also means uh, the sperm stream from where all people are born again that belong to this oak tree and the sound E means 
äh, eng. Ein eng ist äh, eng ist a meadow, a field. It's a symbol that relates to agriculture, but also to the green in the tree. Uh, the leaf of the tree are symbolized by the sound a. Eh. So in the tree we have leaves, and in these leaves is what we in Finnish call magla, and in English sap, and in root in root language sav. So when you can take leaf from a tree, what has you cook water and you put this leaf inside, you can create tea. Now there are certain that taste very good for to make tea from, and especially this leaf where the sunlight come through. If you keep this leaf against the the light and you see the sunlight come through it's very suitable to make tea from but if it is one leaf like a palm leaf when when you keep it against the light no sunlight come through it's not so incredible to make tea from palm leaf we have this different kind of leaf existing uh, in the nature and this leaf when what we take tea uh, are falling under the sound a ah, and is feminine so we have the sound O, oh, what is representing masculine, the sound E, eh, what is more representing feminine, the machla, the sap, the sav, that is in the leaf, in the tree. So it's more the, representing the green in the nature. Um, the next one is E, and E means island. So in root language the sound E is island and is representing again both masculine and feminine. So the root language has nine clear sounds. Yeah, we have A, E, I, U, 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 O, E, E. It's the only language that we know of on the planet that has nine clear sounds. And outside of this clear sound they have 19 consonants, of which two are, uh, sorry, 18 consonants. Yeah, because 18 consonants, because this E appears two times. No? Um, small, small break, let's have small break, small cut. Um, yeah, we have to put in still a little bit uh, of how these marks of the sound look, no? so that you get the right association of that also. Now all these marks, all these sounds, what we talked about, they are represented by marks, of course, appear in one ring system. So you can make a graphic display of all these things, where you show uh, these marks of uh, the sounds that appear on the outside of one ring. It is one system uh, that you start by drawing one ring, and then you can do, like we explained from the beginning, from the center of that ring, you can make, uh, you can make cast the shadow of one pole. One imaginary pole in your brain, then in a two-dimensional system, uh, from the center to, let's say, 12 o'clock. Yeah, we, we start, of course, 12 o'clock. It becomes this E when you make this. Now, there you cut the ring you get one point and then you can new, draw new circles. You can draw circles on this ring, six circles, and then you get everywhere points where this ring become cut. Yeah, And there you can start to draw all kind of line in between. And this is one enormous process where we have one friend, uh, Cliff Barber, one American guy who is working with this principle of showing these marks of the sound, so how we come to this mark of the sound because they are actually appearing naturally they are not an imagination by people that now one day we say the sound ah and we make one mark like ah no? and the sound b we make like one b uh, this is not one imagination thing it is one uh, it there is one completely natural system behind what is based on a ring and pole so what you can do when you have one ring, if I give one simple example, uh, is that you divide that ring. Yeah, that is if you draw the first line, let's say from uh, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, then you cut the ring in half. No? Now if you do that on the correct place of the ring, 
you find that when you cut the ring, where you divide it, you have been doing one thing where one half of the ring is this moon sickle, say, and the other half of that ring is the day. Yeah? So the say appears before the day in the, in the ring system as they appear in the sound. Yeah, we start E, A, B, C. So when you divide this ring, you get on one side the C, and below that you get the day. And in this principle of drawing line and making all this combination, you get after day A, and after A you get F. So it is one writing system, what in root language is called uh, staff, staff script. So a staff is like a staff, as in English language, and script means a uh, form of writing. Yeah? A staff script is a script where you create letters which are based on one staff and all parts of ring. Yeah? So we have the ring, U, which is the whole thing, that is one mark, and now we can use part of this ring uh, to, in combination with this staff, create all kinds of other mark that in this um, graphic display appear all on their correct place on the edge of this ring. Now, the staff script is a script like we have here on this, for example, on this box. No? We have all this M, A, N, G. They are all, uh, all consisting of staff or parts of the ring. Like the say is like half of a ring. And when you look the gay, the sound gay, um, you see it is three quarter of one ring and then one stripe going to the middle. Uh, the letter, the sound pay is one, uh, one staff and there is a half ring on it. So all these letters are combination of staff and ring. A is two big staff and a small staff in the middle. B is one staff with two half ring. C is half ring. D is a staff with half ring. A is again staff, staff, small staff, bigger staff. F, the same. G is three quarter ring with a staff. O, uh, two staff and one in the middle. E, Y, again staff with a moon sickle under. Ko, it's three staff, L, two staff, M, one, two, three, four staff, N, three staff, U, ring, P, staff, half ring, Q, ring and staff, R, staff, half ring, staff, S, is a funny one, but it's like two moon sickle in a way, two half ring, yeah, when you put them together, uh, T, two staff, U is three staff. In the symbolic, when you make the when you make this ring system, they come out like three staff. But many times we make the ah uh, no wait a second they become it become with a, it become with a half half ring and two staff. Yeah, it's one ursprung from where all this thing originate. Um, U V is two staff. And then we come to some of these marks what not uh, exist in the English language, in the sound. Uh, in the, they exist in the sound, but not as marks, no? Uh, this X, U, Zeta, we have in English also. Uh, this is two staff that cross each other. The U is two staff. And this one, the Uggdrasil. Um, Zeta is this construction of three staff. And then we have O which is one A with a ring on top, with a moon on top. Yeah, that is the sound for O. And A is an A with two dots on top. And E is a ring with two dots on top. Where this O is again representing this masculine, the A the feminine, and E this combination of masculine and feminine, these two dots.
Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. What do you think of this? Um, do you feel that there is anything what... Uh, I mean, this meaning of these sounds, they will become, uh, they will become repeated. Now we go through the, all them later on, because it's not so easy to all store them straight away in the brain, no? But I want to know if you basically get... Uh, you, you, if you have been getting the, these things, what I've been explaining so far, no? In the sound system. Yeah, or if there is anything what you would like to know from this by yourself, a little bit more. Maybe we should give some... Um, have, a, have a break, you know, put, put a break. This is a little bit difficult, I have a small break. Yeah, because uh, I have a little bit difficult when... Oh, Rika language. Oh, yeah, Rika. yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, now all this... All these sounds, when we go through them, we see that if we don't pronounce them only as the alphabet, like E, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, U, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, I, A, we can also take the meaning of the sound and put them after each other. So then we start with E, A, S, R, Bori, Shera, but there is one little rhyme in all this thing. So the, sto the, the alphabet has also like a rhyme inside which tells a story. Yeah, so I first take that in root and then I will make a little free translation of that in English, <laughs> no? because we have to use some more words there. Eh? But the principle is I asernas bori se dagen ekens frus grund hel. I jalenas kalenas laak mone noordjerna uden polen kwadraat. Ra, Sul, Tur, Oorsprungets, Baner, I. So it's one story. It tells something. Uh, the sound I, they also use in the root language for inside. You can put something I koppen. No? You put something in the cup. No? So we have I, Aserna's Bori. In the burg, in this castle of Aser. I, Aserna's Bori. C. Dagen, Ekens, Freus, Grund, Hell. Um, this is a little bit complicated, maybe. Uh, let me see if I find the right uh, formulation in English. Um, the C is a uh, moon sickle. And also the phallus symbol, where, from where it come, uh, the sperm would create all people on the planet. Yeah? Uh, the sound D also means D. has also to do with D. And the combination of D means drinking. D. So the children, they D the milk. But now the man, he can also D from his own machinery. Yeah, so in the heathen time, the people were, the masculine, they were drinking their own sperm every day. It was completely natural for them. So this of drinking the own sperm is day D. No? Now, uh, this uh, Lemminkainen, who is this children maker in this story, who is represented by this second E, uh, here at five o'clock, what we talked about before, um, he, uh, he has one C form of prick. Yeah, so when the sperm come from that, uh, when he drinks the sperm from that, we have C and D, C and D. It's also this combination in the symbolic, from where it's produced from this sperm also in, uh, in this system of creating people on the planet, they create the oak tree, the egg, yeah, C, D, egg, C, D, egg. What was it now? I asnas boris se dagen ekens fru. From the oak tree come the seed, the F. Yeah? And this F, this seed, it creates a new human being. It creates the ground, the base from where we all start. Yeah? A, B, C, D, E, F, this ground. And this happening takes place in hell at the North Pole before the ice time. So, I asnas boris. Say dagen, ekens, freus, grund, hel. 
then we come again to E. Yeah? And after that come E, Jalenas, Kalenas, Laak. Uh, in the law of the uh, the law of Jaler and Kaler, I J K L. In this law of Jaler and Kaler, these two castes who live outside in these ringlands, uh, these three class who live outside of Udenma, these Vaner, these people who give out the information there, they have one law which is based on nature, where this law consists of the, the following sounds that come after L, uh, M, N, U, P, Q. So this law is based on Moon, uh, North Star, the Pole Star, M, M, N, U, Uden, the Sun, everything, P, Pole, the Pole, this Pole, but also this Nature Pole, what exists in in this galaxy and on this earth pole um, K L M N U P Q Q quadrat this mathematic so this law is based on this moon north star wooden pollen and quadrat then there is Ra Sul Tur um, Ra is representing is representing moon. Uh, Sul is representing uh, the sun, and we have Tur. Um, Ra Sul Tur. Um, they are Tur means also the heart, yeah, the center, the heart, the heart friend. Um, the heart is the the connection what create make everything possible you know? like all the phenomena what we have on on this planet all the nature phenomena they are existing here because of sun and of moon yeah so this creates uh, all everything that grows that lives on this planet is, is regulated by this power of sun and all the sap in the trees and all the fluid in our bodies and everything is related to moon. You know? It is an influence that we all put to moon. Um, Ra su tur is T U R, but tur the other way around is R U T. There is also again root, yeah. And root means the root, the principle from where everything starts, like the root of one tree. You know? So also these roots, what we have uh, here, the roots, the root of these people that we are all together here on one planet in the hidden time, was based on uh, on one uh, tour system, where this tour we express as human being between two masculine on the masculine side, two friend, hard friend on the feminine side, uh, and in the same time this. Tour is again the most sensitive part. This heart is again the most sensitive part by the man in his trouser, and by the female uh, when we talk about by the woman when we talk about clitoris. Yeah, so it's this story about this tour's hammer, what we had been talking about a little bit before. It will come later on, so we can have it on this camera also without problem. Um, Rasul tour it creates this combination that everything exists. And we come to Ursprungets Vaner I. Origin of the Vaner is I. Again at 12 o'clock, where is this Alphade? Yeah? So I Asenas Bori, Se Dagen, Ekens Freus Grund Hel, I Jalenas Kalenas Laak, Mone, Noordjerne, Uden, Polen, Moertje, Noordjerne, Uden, Polen, Quadrat, Rasul Tour, Ursprungets Vaner I. Yeah, so it tells one story, one little story of how in one place on the planet originate this human being and how they spread out in one system that was based on nature law and the understanding of all this power that we have around us, sun and moon and star and have influence on all this happening that take place on the planet. Um, 
this X U Z O E O, they are not uh, straight away into this Ramsa, into this rhyme. No, they have not so much to do with this thing. They are more symbolic and point on this different aspect uh, of nature, what we take into us, and in which way the stream of the sperm is going out of the planet, and actually that we all belong to this oak tree in uh, this system. Um, let's put a stop. Uh, we will do a little bit this eight power and uh, maybe even we get today together this eight figure on which this story is based. Um, we have um, eight power what are represented by eight figure and this eight power start with hell because hell is where the people on the planet originate. So that's where we start from, so it becomes a good point to begin with. Hell, uh, I already explained, is this center place at the North Pole before ice time. So now we are going to throw us completely into one other time space. Um, we go into the paradise time. This whole Wijnemeunen mythology we can divide in basically three periods. The time before the ice time, the time under the ice time and the one after the ice time. Now the one after the ice time is of course the one where we will start to find out the association that relate to the life what we have today. Yeah, we're about the last 10,000 years ago when the ice time finished we start to get more familiar with all this situation, what we have now. But this under ice time period we don't know so much about, we have not so much idea about, and the time from before the paradise time when we were a little bit different situated on this planet, we have absolutely no idea anymore, anywhere. I mean, we have the word paradise, but we don't actually know so much what it means. No? So there are different interpretations on that. But also this paradise time, or paradiset in root language, consists of sound. Yeah? So if we go in the sound system, we can start to find out all kinds of things, that what do they mean with paradise, or in root language, paradiset. Yeah? So I throw a little bit of this in between. When we have paradiset, we start with pa, the sound pa, p and a. And Pa is Asana's pole. Now we know what Asara, these people there in this ringland, and we have pole. Now A is also, of course, this Ukko and also this Akka, but when we talk about it in relation to this pole, I think we should look for it on the masculine side. Yeah? So there this Pa, this Asana's pole, is this figure from where all this system of creating of people on the planet starts from, but in the same time the place, because Asana's pole is of course on this North Pole. There is this place where we turn around this imaginary pole. No? Um, Ra is the substance what is in the sperm, from the sperm from where we are all born, and uh, this has to do with the Disa, one system uh, of star mother through which we spread all over this planet, who create one Et. Et means like the, uh, the, the, the branches in the tree. Yeah? All the branches in the tree create one Et. So if we belong to the oak tree, uh, we have one Et that belong to the oak tree. We are one family. So we add, we can say, also family. So Paradiset, it tells about one place from where it starts and one a, a place where the people start and from where goes out one system all over the planet where we create one et, where we create our family. Yeah? But in the time before uh, the ice time, because in that time all people we're living according to one information system that goes out from hell, this place at the North Pole. Now hell has as a symbol uh, the swastika. 
Yeah? So the swastika we find today in many different cultures around the planet. You find it in Japan, in China, in India, in Africa, in all kinds of cultures around the planet. We always find this swastika. Now the swastika uh, means the life wheel. And the life wheel is going out from hell, from this place at the North Pole before ice time. Uh, swastika consists of sound again, where we have swa and stika. Swa, uh, swa is this short combination they make from swavel uh, or saltpeter, this material where you can make bombs from, firecracker and all this stuff. No? Schwefel in German language. Uh, swa, swa, uh, swavel uh, is it. I fall over my own tongue now. It's actually come from Swavel and Stikkan. So when they make this combination, they create Swastika. Today we have this association in our brain. And Stikkan is one stick. Yeah, so Swavel stick actually means like one, like one match. No? It's exactly the same. Eh? So this, uh, this life wheel, it rolls out from hell. And consists of uh, four spoke yeah? or two spoke that go in one cross so four spoke and on this spoke you can hang boats yeah? small <coughs> sea form things you can hang two on it if you make actually one physical swastika which they use in different festivals no? where people dance around uh, around trees yeah? all together they make ring dances uh, they could use this symbol and hang it up in one tree, no? by taking away the crown of the tree, they put one iron ring, and out of this ring come four spoke, and now you hang boats on this spoke, all from metal, and now you fill them up with saltpeter, you put this crown of the tree back on top, no? for nice decoration, and now you could light this swavel in this boat, yeah? and then you get completely the same effect like you do in one Chinese firework still today, where this life wheel starts to turn with horrible speed uh, in this uh, tree around which all these people are dancing and having one party. No? So the swastika is the symbol for hell, the life wheel. Yeah? So hell you usually see represented uh, uh, as one ring with one cross inside, but of course to make this effect uh, of turning around, this ring becomes broken a little bit in order to make this boat shaped form effect to let this whole thing go around. Uh, the next power they talk about in this saga is called uh, Bok. And Bok become the, uh, the name of this uh, family of oak tree that go out. This Bok is uh, represented by one straw bok and a straw bok is one construction which we still today can use under the Christmas tree where this uh, straw bok becomes made from the straw from the grass that we cut no? now this goes if we go in the sound again we come in the root word uh, to the root word strawlar and the sun is giving out strawlar or rays as we say in English. Now when this strawlar fall on the ground in which we have one seed, then this seed starts to sprout. This fro, this seed starts to sprout and out uh, come one um, it come out one one root and this starts to become bigger and we get uh, we get like the arms of the grass here where when they dry in the under the sun we can collect this straw and make one straw bog out of it one nice symbol what still today is used um, the second the third symbol is e and e is this 12 o'clock one which represent the trisul which is representing the tree sul and tree means one tree and sul means the sun so the tree sul means the sun tree a trident a symbol that this uh, that belongs to this book 
and he's actually representing his breeding equipment, <coughs> yeah, his children making equipment, because the trisul they make in the form of one uh, one pole with two bock horn on the side and symbolically this prick in the middle. No? So it's one like one prick with two bock horn coming out. That is the third symbol, the symbol of E, and then we come to U then. Now U then already we talked about is the sun and also everything and become symbolized by one snake that bit himself in the tail. One ring, but they could make nice symbols from different kind of work, from metal work where you can make this snake to bite himself in the tail and you put it in your ear. Uh, the snake that bites himself in the tail is one thing that has to do with the possibility of the masculine to put themselves in one knot. So like I already said before, is that in the Eden time, these boys, when they become seven years old, they start to make one exercise by which they can drink their own sperm. No? So they can put their feet in their neck no? in one particular system. I can't do it because I'm stiff as a fart. So anyway, if you would make a lot of exercise when you start as a young boy, when you are still completely flexible and everything, you can make this like yoga exercise where you can put yourself in a knot and you can bite yourself in your own tail no? and drink the sperm in that way. No? So this becomes symbolized by this ring. Um, Hell bok i uden, then we come to Ra. And Ra is in the sperm and Ra is represented by the king. So in this family you have this children maker and then from this children maker comes the first son and this first son he is more representing this Ra. Ra is representing the moon as king is representing the moon in this hidden uh, in this hidden philosophy no? in this hidden uh, lifestyle they have there the first son of this book is representing the moon in Finnish language um, king is kuring as now the sound ku means moon ring is one ring and us are these people who live inside Udenma. So Ku ring us. Yeah? Meaning the king. And where the part Ku is moon. So king is always representing moon. Um, on the female side you say Ku ring atar, where tar is the word for uh, for the female. Yeah, this, like in English we have daughter. Yeah, when you have this combination with T-A-R or T-A-R, it always means uh, female. So Kuring Atar is also consisting of Ku. It's also this ring inside. It's also this A inside that can mean uh, Aser or Akka. In this case, Aser or Akka. And um, also consists of this principle of moon. Now she is the first daughter that is born in this family. So first daughter and first son, they both represent moon. Now Ra has as a symbol also the rose. Because this rose is again a red rose that we have in our trouser. And this uh, king, he is creating one system of making one ras. So from this Ra is created one Ras, where the king is responsible. So also in the word Ras, or in English race, we can see this combination that leads to Ra. Now, um, as a maker of the race, without to make children by himself, he is creating a second et of people. So this first family we call Piruet and the second we call Rus Et. Yeah, et means family and we have this five Et system, two in Udenma, three outside of Udenma. So we have Piruet and Rus Et inside Udenma. So Rus Et means actually the family of Rose. Yeah? 
So because King is responsible for how this system, how it rolls out, this rose, this rose is also used for him as a symbol. The next one is Tour. And Tour means um, the heart or the heart friend for both the masculine and the feminine. And the symbol for Tour is Tour's hammer. And this Tour's hammer you can make like in still today we find him in all kinds of symbolic uh, where it always looks like one hammer. Now Tour's hammer consists of three parts. It consists of egg, kolf and hoofwood. So we can talk about hammer and hoofwood. And the hammer and hoofwood is the uh, is the uh, flat part of the hammer, uh, the, the round part of the hammer. Then the middle part is the kolf from where the shaft comes out. And the sharp side of the hammer we call in root language egget of hammer, so the egg of the hammer. Now this same hammer we have in our trouser where we have egg, kolf and hoofwood. So, um, this Tours hammer is representing this principle for uh, this symbol for Tour. Then we have two more power, and they are Frey and Freya. Uh, Frey and Freya are the first people that are born on the planet, and they are one twin. Where Frey is the masculine, and Freya is the feminine. Now Frey has as a symbol a Frey Shara. Like in the alphabet, we have A, B, C, where C is Moon Shara. Frey, he has as a symbol Frey Shara, Moon Sickle, or a, a, a sickle, yeah, a sickle by which you can take in the seed also, like the Druids. Yeah? The Druids have this kind of sickle. And this is representing uh, his, uh, himself as a fertility symbol. Yeah, it's also a phallic symbol, no? this moon sickle, or this Shara, moon Shara, what he has. And Freya, she is represented by the Lyra. So every time when you see one Lyra in some decoration, or in architecture, or any form, in any place, every time when you see one Lyra, you get the association of Freya. So Lyra in, Eng in English is liar, I think. No? Um, it's, uh, what is the word in English? Lyre, Lyre you say. Yeah, it's a small harp, no? Which have this this form with this string in between yeah, and some construction. No? I think everybody has seen before. No? Um, so there we have this eight power: Hel, Bok, I, Uden, Ra, Tur, Frey, Freya, with all their symbolic. Now these eight power they are represented by eight figure who are the main character in this story, what we will talk about in the next days. No? Um, these eight figures consist of four masculine and four feminine. Yeah? So we have on the... Uh, if we put them all together in one line, we start with this uh, grandfather and grandmother principle, then we come to Ukko and Akka. Ukko is masculine, and Akka is feminine, the grandfather and the grandmother. Then we have uh, Seppo and Maya. Seppo is the name of the king, the first son, and Maya is the first uh, daughter of Ukko and Akka. Both of them are representing moon, where Ukko and Akka are representing sun. And then we have the next two, Lemminkainen and Jotzen. Where Lemminkainen is the twelfth son of Ukko and Akka, so he is the brother of Seppo. Seppo is the first, Lemminkainen is the twelfth. And he is the children maker. Where he as children maker also represents son. So we have there, in these characters, in these figures, we have three who represent Sun, we have Ukko and Akka and Lemminkainen, we have two who represent Moon, Seppo and Maya, 
And now we have Jotsen from Lemminkainen and Jotsen. And Jotsen, she is like the, she is representing the earth. She is the girl who is the most healthy and beauty on the planet, who become chosen from uh, all these Van people that live in these ringlands outside of Udenma. So before we had one election system where we chose the most healthy and beauty on the planet, just like we do today, no? with this kind of what they call it Miss Universe election no? or Miss World election or whatever. Um, Jotsen in root means, Jotsen is the Finnish word for the swan. And swan consists of two sounds. Swan is in English swan, consisting of two sounds, S and van. Now van we already know what it means, yeah? these people outside from Udenma, from where she become chosen. And now she goes together with S, with sun because she goes together with Lemminkainen, who is the children maker. So the combination of S and Van creates Van, uh, uh, what is the symbol also for her. Yeah? When you see one Swan, you become reminded about Jotsen, about this uh, woman from where come uh, all these 12 sons and 7 daughters, more also, but 12 and 7 who have one function in this story. So we have Uko Aka representing Sun, we have Seppo Maya representing Moon, we have Lemminkainen representing Sun, uh, Swan representing or Jotsen representing Earth, and then we have in Finnish language Sampo and Aino, which is the same like Frey and Freya. So in the mythology, Sampo and Aino are like Frey and Freya, where Sampo <coughs> represent uh, the masculine ideal. So all men are Sampo and all women are Aino, Freya. Yeah? So these are these eight characters, four masculine and four feminine, from where now roll out one whole system of creating of people and of information. I think we leave it like this for a moment and uh, we can see what, uh, what we do from this now. Yeah? I repeat first, uh, yes, I start, so we have this Uko uh, Akka, Lemminkainen Jotsen, Seppo Maya, Sampo Aino. Now that are the names that we find in the Van language, so in the Finnish language. And because this spread around whole this bowl based uh, for this for this Van people, we usually, when we talk about the story, always refer to this character in the story based on the Ban mythological name because there they become presented in that form. No? Um, these names they consist also of all kinds of meaning no? and we will go into that much a little bit later on it becomes otherwise too much to do all in the same time. We can take them all in sound, no? like we have Uko and Akka and Sepu and Maya. When you divide all this sound in their particular meaning, they also start to tell one story about what these characters are actually doing and what they are representing and what they are making. Now, inside Udenma, they are... Uh, we are speaking root language, yes? Outside is Van language, inside is this root language, so we have also all this character existing in root language. We start with root, this language based on 29 sound, where every sound has a meaning, and now from this root they have been creating one Van language, which is much bigger than this natural language called root. So by taking the individual sound from the uh, root language, all these different 29 different sounds that we have, by making different combinations, this Aser have been constructing a language for the Bana. It consists of exactly the same sound, but constructed in a different form, so that you can make many, many, many more words by or many many more association of one word by ending by changing the ending of the word 
Yeah, in this Van language you have the possibility by changing to the ending of the word to come to a much more clear, uh, detailed expression of that what you want to show in nature. Where in the root language, just like for example in the English language, we have to be very descriptive. Yeah, we cannot really pinpoint things out that we want to say really exact. You have many times to make a whole bunch of words in order to, through a description, give the person a certain idea of that what you want to tell. But there you can always, you leave all, all kinds of shades many times. You know? In this one language you have the possibility by using one cas casu system, by I don't know the terminology in English by, by uh, let's say by changing the ending of the word by putting their other uh, sound combinations to come to a very exact description of that what you want to express. No? Um, the same eight characters as in Van we have also in Root. So there we call this Uko Per. Now Per again consists of three sounds. We have P, A, and R, or PER, yeah? where P means the head, because he is the head. P is the head on our body, but P uh, can also be the head of one system, and R behind. R is Ra, so the combination becomes PER, who is the same like UKKO. So what is UKKO for the Vaner is PER for the Aser. Akka, she is called Ella. And Ella is relating to the Van language word Elama. And the word Elama means life. Yeah? So we are uh, alive. Uh, Elama. Where Ella is this combination that uh, refers to uh, Akka. And Ma is a combination meaning word. Yeah, uh, world, the, the earth, yeah, so we sit on the Ma, and Ma is represented through Yotzen, she is representing the earth, she is like, uh, um, how to say, and when Yotzen represents the earth, when her 12th son becomes 27, this Yotzen becomes Akka, and there she is representing the earth mother, so just like this, Uko or Per is representing the All Father, Akka or Ella is representing the Earth Mother. Ma means land, Ma means the Earth, and Ma, Ma, Mamma is the mother figure. No? So we use that combination almost in every language, just like Pa, Asana's Paul, yeah, this Paul, Pa, we relate usually almost in all language to Papa. No? They are combinations that exist and become used almost everywhere. What, uh, if you go in the meaning of the sound, really express also what it is. No? So we have this Papa Mama, this Per and Ella. Um, and then we have Balder. No, sorry, we have to take first the other one. Seppo Maya, they become in the root language Ra and Mai, uh, sorry, Ers and Mai. So we have uh, Ers is Seppo, the first son, like we say uh, Erst, Erst, like in, in, in Dutch, Erst yeah, is the number one. No? Erst, Ers. Um, King become represented by Ra, and Ra is again the sound, the meaning for the letter R. Yeah, so R is E, this A with these two dots, and R meaning Ra, so R. Um, R's and Mai. Mai relate like we have the months uh, in which everything uh, uh, come in life today, no? Mai, it has to do still today with uh, one uh, thing where the nature come in life. So since and after the ice time in Mai we start to get all the green. No? Now before this month of Mai, May, uh, we had one in the breeding system or in this creating of people system had a very important function. Yeah? 
but we will come to that later on. We have Ers and Mai, as Seppo and Maya, and then for Lemminkainen Jotsen we have Balder and Swan. So Swan I already explained before, but this Balder we didn't have there. Balder he have this ball. He is this children maker, and he have this ball from where come all this sperm. This whole construction here in root actually means ball. So it's the thing from the egg to the head, no? Which from where the sperm come from, where all the people are born. So we have Balder and Swan. This S and Van, this girl would become elected under the banner that goes together with S, with Sun. Balder is representing the Sun, so she becomes Swan, and she has that Swan a symbol. And then we have uh, Sampo and Aino, which are uh, Frey and Freya, as they are already mentioned in uh, this eight power system. So we have in root Per, Ella. Ra, uh, Ers and Mai, uh, Balder, Swan, Frey and Freya, exactly the same in root as they are represented in the Finnish language, Ukko, Akka, Lemminkainen, Jotsen, Seppo, Maya, Sampo and Aino. Ukko, Akka, Lemminkainen, Jotsen, Seppo, where I go again, off road, I go again, Ukko, Akka, Seppo, Maya, no, I get completely Lemming flipped kind of now, notes. you know, I mean, this is not possible. Oh, Uko Akka, we have Uko and Akka, Lemminkainen and Jotsen, Seppo and Maya, Sampo and Aino, and in root language we talk about Gubbe, Gumma, Balder and Swan, uh, Ers and Mai and Frey and Freya. So on both sides, eight figures of which four feminine and four masculine present. Uh, on eight powers. Yeah, and these eight powers uh, are represented by these eight figures. So we start with Hel, the North Pole before ice time, or the center of Udenma. What is the center from all this system of people creating around this ball? and the center of information, uh, seven islands from where all this originates. Um, the second one, Bok, this family structure that become created rolling out over all this bowl. The third power, E, what is represented by the three soul, which is held by this Ukko figure in this story. The fourth one, Uden, the sun, and everything. Yeah, they said one, one rhyme in, in the story that like Uden is a ring, Uden is everything. Yeah? And everything, it consists out of three words. Like ever, ever means always. Re means again and again. Like you rebuild or you reconstruct. And things are the things that we can perceive with our eyes. Yeah, the, how we perceive uh, the nature. No? So ever re-thing means that it always like renews the things, which is the power of sun. Yeah? Grass is growing, grass is going away and growing again. And like this is with all nature, with animal, with uh, human being and everything that is alive. Um, Uden Ra which is in the sperm and is represented by the first son, Seppo, who is the king. Um, Tur, which is the hard friend, masculine and feminine. So we keep it simple for the moment, also relating to both the feminine and the masculine fertility part, fertility organs. Um, Frey and Frey are the masculine and the feminine. So every man is taking the ideal of Frey and every woman is taking the ideal of Freya because they are the first people on the planet. So we have Helbok, I, Uden, Ra, Tur, Frey and Freya. Um, coming out from Frey and Freya is one story of how, how we uh, in one particular system spread around this world based on around this earth based on this root language which consists of these 29 sounds with their mean 
um, these eight power are represented by this eight figure who have these names in the mythology in the Van language Uko Akka, Lemminkainen Jotsen, Seppo Maya, Sampo and Aino where Uko and Akka more represent the grandfather and grandmother Lemminkainen and Jotsen the father and the mother Seppo and Maya the first son and the first daughter of Lemminkainen and Jotsen and uh, Sampo Aino again this Frey and Freya this first people figure from which we take the idea now Ukko, Akka and Lemminkainen are representing sun where um, Jotsen is representing the earth and Seppo and Maya uh, again moon now, in root, they were Gubbe and Gumma. Uko and Akka are Gubbe and Gumma, but also we can talk about uh, Per and Ella. They have many different names. These figures, they represent so many aspects of, of, uh, of life in this story, so you find them in many names. No? Um, Gubbe, Gumma, Balder and Swan. Balder is the same like Lemminkainen and Swan is the girl with whom they are making the family of 12 and 7. Now we always talk about these 12 and 7, uh, they can have more eh? because for them of course it's, uh, if you take the law of average you get to make 12 sons uh, you usually have 12 daughters also. So the family it, it can be larger, it's larger. But these 12 and 7 are these characters that have um, that have a title, a certain function in all this, uh, in all this creation system. Now, Balder Swan. Now we talk about Ers and Mai. So Ers is the king, and Mai is the queen. Now we find that also in root language, because when you talk about um, in English you would say uh, your majesty, in root you say heirs my estate, so you have heirs my estate. Estate in this combination has to do with the aesthetic, so aesthetic are all these beautiful objects that you can create and, are, and that you present to the house of the king and the queen. So in this hidden system you have king and queen as brother and sister, first son and first daughter of Balder and Swan, of uh, Lemminkainen and Jotsen, who to whom people can, in appreciation of the system, send all kinds of beautiful objects, what they can put in their place. So people create a very beautiful object, and when you make the most beautiful object, you present to the king and the queen. I mean, we still do this kind of thing today, you know, in different king system when they have parties or birthday or whatever, people bring them present, you know, like they did before. And this very beautiful object we call aesthetic, and that is why Ers and Mai are basically representing as their, in their position, this aesthetic that people create uh, for them. So from there we get these titles, Ers Maya State in root language, same in Swedish language, and it becomes a little different in, uh, in the English, English language. But there you find still Maya very strongly in this majestic. No? And uh, we call them, uh, what do we have? We have Gubba Gumma, Balder Swan, Ers and Mai, and Freya and Freya, again, yeah? so they are all the same, these titles, but consisting of different sounds, in root and in van. Now on the van language, or the Finnish language, we can see from their names later on when we go in there, uh, one system, what they create. Yeah, we have this Sampo, where Sam means together, and Pu means one tree yesterday that we all belong to one oak tree to one sampu to one together tree yeah which is represented by this masculine figure and Ainu uh, in Finnish 
Aina means always and U means Uden. So I know or I knew she is always Uden. She is always uh, part of this process of renewing and creating because all the life comes uh, from the masculine through the woman. You know? So they create this ground for the they have this ground for the, to receive the sperm from where this can uh, go in the egg and become a new, new human being. So this always goes through the mother. That is why we have also this Akka representing all this, um, having this title as Earth Mother. In Finnish we call her Ma Tar, where Ma means Earth and Tar, like or Ter, always relates to the woman, to the female. So Matar is the Earth Mother. Um, it is based on one alphabet, this root language, that roll out from these people on which they create the system of Aser inside Udenma and the Vaner outside of Udenma. The Aser consists of two class, the Vaner consists of three class, and we are all like one family tree spreading around this planet. Based on this natural language, now they start to nervous, eh? After the, that is what should buy. And they are basing all this thing through their understanding they can have through the individual meaning of the sound in that natural language that they have, this root language. Now, we have there these 29 sounds, we can go through them shortly again. I call first all the sounds and then divide them in this clear sound and this consonant. Yeah? So we have E starting at 12 o'clock and then coming A, A, Sir. B, Bori, C, Shera, D, Dag, E, Ek, F, Fre, G, Grun, O, Hel, I, I, J, Jarler, O, Kaler, L, Laak, M, Mone, N, Nurshanan, U, Uden, P, Pole, Q, Quadrat, R, Ra, S, Sul, T, Tur, U, Ursprung, W, Waner. And then we have these six outside, X, U, Z, O, E, E, where X is this tour symbol relating to oak tree. Um, U is Ugdrasil, the world tree, which is also a life tree which still uh, we have on the planet. The Ugdrasil is a mythological tree. It relates to all living thing on the planet in the symbolism of the, um, of the mythology. It, re it is the woman tree, we call it, because it's through the female aspect of nature that everything renews again. And now the Utrasil is also one ash tree. So the ash tree is in a uh, root language, ask treded, the ash tree, the uh, asche in German language, um, S in Dutch, they're all quite the same sound. No? This ash tree is this. Uh, represented this represent Ultrasil. Or Ultrasil is represented by one ash tree. Now in this root language we have these nine clear sounds. Yeah, we have A, E, I, U, 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 O, E, E. So they have nine clear sounds which are made in combination of these consonants like B, like C, like O where all these clear sounds you can combine with one of them and give this particular, gives a meaning, uh, gives an insight based on this combination of two different sounds. Yeah, like B, Bori, but B is B, A, so it also says Akens Bori. Yeah, the oak tree, uh, how do you say, the, the, the oak tree castle. Yeah, if you make free translation in, in English, no? Like Ho is, uh, Ho and O, where Ho means again hell, and O is meaning the river, yeah, so, or the stream. So in this case they talk about the stream of sperm, which goes out as one tree, one sperm tree all over the planet, which starts from hell, yeah, where it originates, all this thing, so Ho. Another combination is this R, 
where, which consists of A and R, where A is uh, the mahla, it is more the female aspect, it's the, like the sap in the tree is the mahla, and also the woman have here one juice which is called mahla in Finnish language. So like we have sperm, they have mahla. So A, we have these last three sounds, O, A, E, where O is masculine, because it's this A with this moon on top, which is this representing this sperm, just like this dot as we find on the E. But we have A, this A with these two dots on it, which represent this sap in the nature, and the fluid what the girls have. Yeah? So there we have one female side. So R, when we say R, Ra, which is represented by the king, it's not really correct only because it also represents Maya. It also represents the queen because it, we say A and R, R. Yeah? Where the A side is Maya, who is representing this Mahla, this green in the leaf, this Leuf, as they call it in root language. We have two kinds of leaf. In English, we only talk about leaf. Yeah? Palm leaf, uh, oak leaf, uh, birch leaf. They are all leaf. Now, leaf in root means life. Yeah? Leaf, we say, is life, like in English. But leaf is also one leaf in the tree, one leaf in one bush. But we have two kinds of leaf. One leaf is the leaf where the rays of the sun come through. You can take one leaf, keep it against the sun and light come through. And in this leaf, from this leaf you can make tea. You can take out the mahla. You can take out the sap, the sav, as they say in root. Now, the a side is representing more maya, and the r side is more this sperm, what is the inside, what is inside the sperm of the masculine. So R is actually both feminine and both masculine, like most sounds. You know? um, there are sounds what are more particular masculine and more particular feminine. You know? We have like E and we have U, you know? and from E and U, when we put them together, we create new people on the planet. So U usually have more in the symbolism has more feminine aspect, where E has more masculine aspect. But A, it can be masculine and it can be feminine. You know? We all belong to O to. Yeah? Um, o, A and Ö. Ö means again island. An island is all with two dots. And is uh, the one which is for both uh, male and female. Yeah, so in this last three sound we have one what is more masculine, one what is feminine, and one what is for both. Um, yeah, we talked about these as A Aser. These Aser are the people who live inside Udenma. We start the alphabet with that. So after E, we have, from where rolls out all this thing, we have these A Aser who live in Udenma. Uh, the center of Udenma is on this island where they have one burg, bay, burg, one castle, Bori. Uh, one center of creating an information. C is moon share, moon sickle, also again a uh, phallic symbol. We have day, dark, uh, the day, nice day today again. Uh, A, ache, the oak tree. F, fre, the seed, the seed of the oak tree, but in the same time the seed what we have here. Gay ground, the ground on which we sit, or the ground. Gay means also giving, so the ground is giving. The system is based on giving. Ho is, we already talked, hell, the home from which we originate. E is this twelfth sun on that place. Lemminkainen. Ye are the jaller. Ho are the kaller the two highest class in this Vaner who live outside. The third one we call trail. Yeah, but the trail we don't find in the alphabet. There is one meaning for that, but we can talk about it later on. No? Um, so the trail are the children of the car, the car are the children of the yard. Ye uh, ko el is lag. Lag means like we are together now in one lag, we are one team, but lag means also law and L, the sound L also stands for logic. 
M is Moon, Moon, representing by Ra, or by Ash, the first son, and by Mai, the first daughter. And Nurchernan, North Star, or also Knowledge, the Pole Star, the one that stands straight over the axle of the Earth. Um, KLMN. O L M N U U U then one ring and everything because out of this ring comes everything. P pole, the pole which is the earth pole but also this pole. Q quadrat, the symbol for mathematics which is based on this ring and pole system, this female and masculine aspect. So it's one binary system as they would call it today. Um, <coughs> R, Ra, we already talked about that just now. S, Sul, and Sul means sun. So we talk about Sulen, uh, where the part Su means mouth. In Finnish language, Su means mouth, and Len means to smile. So Sulen, in root language, is a combination that means and sun, but in the same time, if you put them, if you divide them in south, sound, it becomes smiling mouth. You know? There's one association, what you always can see when children make one sun, they always put smiling mouth in it. The funny thing is the word actually says it by itself, su len. Yeah? Um, te tour, and tour is this hard friend symbol, masculine, feminine, and also relating to the most sensitive part of the masculine and the feminine. Um, Oorsprung, and Oorsprung means one origin, everything come out of one origin. Like our origin in hell is, uh, as human being, is our Oorsprung. W is Vaner, these people who live in these ringlands outside. So before... No, we wait. Um, yeah, there we have quite much, this alphabet. It's 23 that go in one ring, yeah? And the six that we have outside. Uh, what else did we talk about yesterday? We had something more there. Power. What? Sorry? Powers, the eight powers and the eight curves. Yeah, 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 we, I mentioned already, yeah? So we have this Helbog, Iu, Den Raad, Tour, Frey, Freya. And they become like the same, represented by this eight figure in, in both this language. Yeah? Uh, and their symbolic. Yeah, we had Frey with this Frey Shara, this sickle. Yeah, we had Freya with this Lyra, this uh, harp, this music instrument. She represents the music. We have their. Uh, Tour, what is represented by this tour's hammer, which has this egg, calf and head with this heart shape. Like we find the heart shape on one side and the apple on the other side, if we look at the head of this machine. Um, tour, what we have before there, we have this... Sorry? Ra. Ra. I do them now backwards. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, Ra has as a symbol the rose and also the horseshoe. Um, the horseshoe has a form of a oo, a oorsproof. Yeah. Now, yeah. Ra is the sun god of Egypt. Yeah, they say today is the sun god of this Egyptian. So in the Egyptian mythology or in this Egyptian story, what we have from there. Ra, he become more, he become sun, no? where in the hidden system from before, Ra is always relating us to moon. No? You can actually find it even, if you take the whole name they used in this Egyptian mythology. No? They talk about Amon Ra. Yeah? Now if you put them in south, you have A, Moon, Ra. Yeah, so actually the name by itself says that he has something to do representing moon. No? But anyway, he become to be represent sun, because maybe it was more high to be sun than to be moon. No? I don't know, I think we need both of this power anyway. Um, 
Of course, the sun is the originating principle of light and everything that's created. So he probably used his name and starts more to associate it with sun, or it become in the end to be more associated with sun, with Ra, than with moon. Um, but -ba -dum. we have this hell of e hell. We have this swastika, this swastik, this swavel stick. What is this uh, cross with these four boats hanging on? Yeah, which is the symbol of the life wheel, the symbol of hell, the life wheel that rolls out from there. So there are like four, seven. You know? yeah, we can even make that uh, that symbol as human being. You, know? you can make like this position. You can see many times. You can see um, like this kind of figure on different uh, paint, different how you say, different sculpture or thing. You can always like see one human being who is making the form of the swastika. You know? And they use it as in the symbolism in the tree uh, around which they can make ring dances, uh, men and women all together. There are one ring of women, one ring of men, and you can go one in one direction, one in the other direction, just like the swastika. Yeah? In this three-dimensional way, it can turn uh, any which way you put it. Um, the strobok. The other symbol coming from the strollar of the sun, what creates the seed to sprout and comes out one straw. And you can collect the straw with the shara, with the sickle, and you can make one straw bok out of it. E the tree sul, which is this sul tree, tree, one tree, or like one, two, three, um, but also one tree. And Sul meaning sun, so the Trisul, this trident, is the symbol for this Uppo, who is also uh, representing this sun tree, this, this tree that creates all this family of human beings on the planet, uh, which is also the ash tree, the Uptrasi. Um, So we have there the symbolism. Well, yeah, we had for this king, we had horseshoe and we had rose. Yeah? So the rose relating to um, uh, also to the head of this prick there on the masculine side. No? Because we have neck and we have over the neck is this rose, so it creates one combination of neck rose. Now, um, in Finnish language, what was this necros in Finnish language? We have lumme. Yeah? So lumme is necros in, in Finnish language, in Ban language, and there it is for old people, meaning one flower, uh, one water flower. Yeah, it's called one necros in root, necros in root, and lumme in Ban. So it's one, how do you call this flower on the, in English language? A lotus, yeah, like in English, lotus. So it's one green with this white thing coming out. And now you can see in many <coughs> different mythology around the planet, you find that these powers, what uh, are symbolizing these mythologies, they always sit on one lotus. Yeah, on this, like in Hindustan, you can see many of these figures sitting on one lotus. Now, if we think lotus is the same like Lume is the same like neck ruse, and there we come to this root combination where neck and ruse, meaning also here the neck and also this red ruse, what is over it, yeah, uh, from which come the white, the sperm, and which create all human beings. So there you can already see from the symbolism they use when we go in the meaning of the sound of the root language that it actually tells us more than that they just sit on one flower. And you can see that they have something to do with, uh, that they are symbolizing certain aspects of life which have to do with creating of human beings. But there we don't find the, the, in many mythologies we don't find the stories to that anymore because they were transferring these stories in their information system uh, by, from mouth to mouth. And, when, this whole kind, when these systems died out, uh, when it didn't work anymore, these 
we, we didn't base it anymore on that. We were left with all kind of symbolism that we find around the planet in different figures, but we don't really anymore know what they represent because we have lost all these stories because we have new information systems. Um, yeah. Is there anything, anything unclear for you? you know, anything unclear of this, what we have talked about now, so that you want to have a little bit more clear aspect uh, before we can after start to roll all this story, you know, of how this works, all this system. I think we have it quite okay at yeah, the moment. Yeah? Maybe you can make the difference from the star script. Uh, ah, yeah, the star, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about the staff script, yeah? so we have also one written form. Yeah, so the staff script is based on, um, on staff and parts of the ring. Yeah, I didn't make that completely clear yesterday. No? So we find different form uh, of... Uh, if you look in the writing... Si if we look in the staff script, in the writing system, we see that sometimes uh, a part of a ring is longer, uh, larger or smaller, no? or longer or, how do you say it, shorter, um, to get the right proportion. No? Like we have in the bay, we have uh, one staff and then a short staff and a short staff and a little part of a circle. Uh, oh no, sorry, this part of the staff is a little bit longer and there we have a little bigger part of the circle before we again make the staff. No? And like this is a little different in each of these marks of the sound, um, each of these marks of sound uh, anyway consists of staff with parts of staff, smaller, yeah, like A, we have big staff, a little bit shorter staff, a still shorter one and a longer one. Yeah. So they are all in parts, just like par and these parts of circle when we have these round combinations. Yeah. Now there is also one other script, what is uh, called slinga, and which is a more uh, round uh, form of writing. Yeah, it's more when you write every, when you can start to write the thing together. So you start to make slinga, you know, like you make L, you, know, you make this kind of thing. And now the staff script before was we used more the muscle is more has more of a masculine association, where the slinga has more of a female association. So this more represents the woman. You know, this kind of slinga script. So we have two right. When you the staff, when you make this like we have here on this box, when you make everyone individual, and this one where you make them all together. Uh, what else we have there? The sling has a more uh, use, useful way of writing nowadays. And we all write sling yeah. now. Today we actually all write sling, huh? but in the machine we start yeah. to use the staff script. Yeah? So there is these two sides. I mean, this of course is more easy in that way that you can more fast make, uh, put all the sound after each other. It's more flowing in that way. Yeah? Where this, in this style, uh, you can see more of a symbolism that relates to this ring and pole. No? Yeah, uh, this is more. You could say that this is more classical because it's more. Uh, it has certain proportion. Uh, which is based on, which are quite mathematic, yeah, so it's very, <coughs> that they call classical, and you have another form, what is more this round form, like rococo, what we call rococo, where you have all these, like, shell forms, yeah, where you have all this round uh, decoration, like on the outside of mirror, or, yeah, you find more these flowing forms, and this is, yeah, this is more, yeah, more, fe it's more representing a female, actually. In the slinger form, yeah. Never by typing out something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, or not. Lying there in the sun, you know, <laughs> taking full sunshine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just listening. Okay, we go for it. Um, every story has a beginning, a middle and an end, so also this saga can tell us uh, something about the beginning and we will go from this beginning. It tells us, uh, uh, the saga tells us about how this planet comes into existence and it tells that this planet Earth was before one Sun so before we had two Sun we had Sun Moon and another Sun here and this Sun exploded and in the explosion of this Sun the plasma of which a Sun consists it cools off and becomes magma and now the sun also consists out of hydrogen and in this explosion it creates one reaction where this becomes one bowl surrounded by water. So in this explosion basically the, 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 the earth comes out of the water so that's what we call the land surface. So there come continents and all this hydrogen become water that fill in between these continents. So the explosion makes that the center part, it cools off and becomes this earth like we have it today. Now you can also squeeze back, if you look at the continents, you can squeeze them together. Yeah? And when they become all together, they be it becomes a very small bowl, where you now will have so much water, that whole this bowl will be surrounded by water. So it becomes like a, like a dead star, no? it becomes like... A, uh, because of the amount of water we have, three quarters of the water is wa three quarters of the earth is water. The whole bowl will be surrounded by water, but of course not any more glowing like one sun. Now they show this in one uh, symbolical way by taking one horseshoe of ten, like the symbol of Ra is one horseshoe made of ten or pewter, and this you heat up. And when you heat this up, it becomes a liquid. And if you throw it in the water, it makes like a small explosion. And it comes out all this pin from it. And this is one thing they do on, uh, on, on New Year, in Sylvester. You make this kind of ceremony where they show how this ball comes into existence. When we have this water in the ocean, it starts one life in the ocean from one cell that divides and divides and divides and divides. And in this whole process of deciding, dividing, we come to this life form where in the water we start with uh, algae, what we in English call algae, in root is algae. And if we take this in sound, we have al and we have ge, which means everything given. Yeah, al is giving. So this is the green that starts in the ocean and that via all kind of combination end up on the land and become the grass and the greenery and the trees and all this green life what we have on the earth. And from this small, smallest form of life it become one small animal like one sperm in the ocean and they become bigger and bigger and still today we call them all or eel in English language. So this is this snake-like thing flying, floating in the water. And all also has a meaning. All means all, no? everything. So there is one animal, animal line starting, one, um, one fauna line. The flora line comes from the algae and the fauna line is coming from this all. Now from this all it come different animal. It go, uh, it's divide and make, uh, we come to one point to one frog, one gruda. And this animal, it can also go out from the water onto the land. And there it develops in some time via, via, via into this construction, what we call monkey. Or in root one, apa. 
Um, we get all this animal on the earth out of this combination of these different that have been there from before. And yeah, just like we get the plants in that way. So it always happened one particular phenomena in the nature that out of one species and another one it creates a new combination. No? Now some uh, are still here of this combination and some have gone already in the time. No? They were not meant to continue anymore. They have been only there basically, I think you could say, to be the, the ground for the next one that arrives and that has a that has a meaning within this nature, where that it can be supposed to continue. Also, the human being, according to this saga, is a combination of two animals. Um, still today, we think that we come from the monkey. There is one idea about that we come from the monkey, but there is a missing link. They don't really know what is the missing link. You know, how can we become this human being just from this monkey? Now in this saga, we t they tell that we, com we become as a combination of a monkey and a nanny goat. Uh, a nanny goat and a monkey who meet at the North Pole. And there this monkey and this nanny goat get together and create the first human being on the planet. Now the root language, when you start to dig in the root language and the symbolism of the root language, you can go to look in the sounds and find this combination of monkey and nanny goat. <coughs> and therefore we have to explain a little bit of these sounds, no? from how we come to this combination. There is, in Finnish, we say uh, to one masculine goat, we call one masculine goat a pili vuoi, a billy goat. And this pili voi, he has one pili. Every man has one pili in his trouser, but also this, uh, this masculine goat has this pili. And pili consists of the sound uh, P, L and E. Now E we know what it means, we've already been talking about for that for an hour or what. And the sound L means law. That means that from this E comes this law this creating, this nature law of creating people. And P means one ring. The sound P means ring because still today we use, uh, in English you say pi, but this P you use to count the circumference of a circle. So P has always the association of circle. So we have peel E. Peel means also like one arrow in English. So it's also again there uh, the association to just this construction, what we find in the trisul in the middle, one prick, which is two horn, bock horn on the side. Um, now, when we, by the men, talk about pili, by the woman, we talk about pilu in Finnish language. So the boys they have pili, and the girls they have pilu, and pilu is pil with one ring. Yeah, so there it shows clearly that U is related to the family. The the female goat they call nanny voi. Now nanny is this, this also what the woman has. They have here nanny, and still today, if you are a mother and you have not uh, enough milk for your child you can bring the child to one nanny, and this nanny, she maybe have enough milk to make that this child become bigger and bigger. And the small one, from the masculine and the female goat, we call skiddy vuoi. And from this skiddy, we come to these kids. The word kids, as we have in English, so the children. In root, we call them schillinger, this small from this... Uh, Pili yet and this nanny yet are Schillinger, and from this we become two children in English language. I should maybe put in at this point that we also use many times the association that we still find in the English language because the English language under the ice time become created as a language which is a combination of root and van. So when you take Sometimes in the English language you can see that one part of the word 
has a very clear root association and another part of the world has a very strong Waan association. So they are from these two languages because of new circumstances that appear on the earth during the ice time, they create a new language. So anyway, based on these two old from before. So in the English, what we use as the language to transfer this story today, uh, we find many of this combination which has an original meaning. So if you don't find them in root or in van, you can always find them from the English also. So it makes it more easy for us. Um, also, we have this monkey, and this monkey we call one in root one apa. And apa is like in English ape, and a the sound A means Aser, and the sound P is Pole, and A again Aser or Uko Raka. So Apa in sound means Asernas Pole, Ap, Asernas Pole, and this Asernas Pole is at the North Pole, because the exact pole is in the center of this ringland Udenma where the Aser live. Then we have um, by this Apa, in the mythology, he has one Pili, and this Pili of this Apa is called Ask. So he has one construction here, what is called Ask, and under his Ask he has Egg, and in this Egg is Embla. So the animal have Embla inside their Egg, and from Embla are created animal. So dog have embla, elephant have embla, a horse have embla, monkey have embla. All this animal has one juice in their balls called embla. Then we have one fertility symbol, what is used in all mythology around the planet, and we find it also in this small character who is flying in the sky with the wings, no? this Amurin, who have something called bow and arrow, where they shoot one arrow through the heart. So this is also one symbol that has to do in the mythology with fertility. And one bow and arrow in root language is called Pilbuge. So there we have again this Pil, like we find it in Pili and in Pilu, we have also this Pilbuge. Now the meaning we find backwards, always when we do this thing, it's like we speak in one way yeah, and then the meaning of the individual sound come backwards. So when we take pilbu ge in sound, we have ge and bu and l and p in this combination. Where ge means giving, bu means one nest, l means the law, the nature law, and p means the ring or Uden. So you give a nest through the law of Uden, through this nature law. Is the sound Pilbuge. So when you put all this sound together in this story that follows now, then you see that on the North Pole, on Asarnas Pole, the North Pole, in hell, on the Seven Island, on the exact center point, is one island called Uden's Ö. So on Uden's Ö, on the island of Uden, the Sun Island, there is this exact center. And in this center there is one Apa, one Asarnas Pole, North Pole, South Pole, but also Apa, one monkey. And this Apa, he comes there on this island and then in front of him he sees one Nenni Vuoi. And he starts to get inspiration and he is putting his Pili called Ask into the pilu of this nanny boy, this nanny goat. Now from his egg is coming embla and going through his ask into the pilu of this nanny boy and there this embla go in the egg of the nanny boy and there starts to grow something and out comes after a period Frey and Freya. Frey masculine and Freya feminine who grow up on the nanny of this nanny voi, so they drink this goat milk and they become bigger and bigger and bigger. Now the goat milk and the mother's milk is practically the same consistency. There is no other milk what is more close to mother milk than this uh, nanny goat milk, this goat milk. 
So these children grow up with that situation and they become bigger and bigger and bigger and they sit there in this nature and have one mother as a, a nanny goat as a mother. But now with seven years it starts to happen something in this egg of this Frey, the Sampo. He starts to develop in his egg sperma. So Frey is the first one who has sperma and from this sperma all people are born on the planet. When he gets the sperma in his egg, when he is seven years old, he starts to speak one language called root, where every uh, sound has a meaning. He has this clock in his head of this sound, where every sound has this meaning. So he understands what he is saying, and he has this natural association of sound in his head, based on this root language. So just like the human beings are born with the hair and the ear and the eye and the mouth and the nose and the hand and the feet, and we have also all the system here by which we can speak. So according to this mythology, human beings have always been speaking from the time that they have been appearing on the planet. Maybe Darwin would turn around in his grave, but <laughs> we will stick to the mythology. No? Um, he, this Frey is the first one to have sperma and also this sperma we can take in sound like all these words we can take in sound and it consists of S which means sun, sul, per and we know what is per per is the the uko but per also consists again of sound of pa which means the head and also here, the masculine have the head, the pa, and in this pa is the r, the, which is in the sperm, from which we have all this association with thinking and talking. Now, the last part is ma, and ma means the earth, and ma we relate to mamma, ud and ma, and in ud and ma it appear this first fray who have this s, Per ma. So as his son, this Frey, he became the first pair when his twelfth son uh, became 27 years old. And he is here on the ma uh, dispensing this equip this material so that we get more people on the planet. And he does that with his sister Freya. So he is transferring all this meaning of sound to his sister. And now they have one clock in their head, this alphabet with this meaning from which they can relate to the nature, their surrounding, and get one understanding of the nature in which way they can create one race, one race of human being on the planet. So to do that, we get incest from the beginning, Frey and Freya starting to make children. And now again we talk about this 12 and 7 in the continuation of this story. There is more, but this 12 and 7 they have a title, they have a function in this family. No? So don't fix only this 12 and 7. Um, Frey and Freya start. Frey when he is 27 year old, he starts to make these children and now it becomes the first son, which is called Seppo and the first daughter, she is called Maya. The twelfth son, he is called Lemminkain. So we will use now the name from this Finnish mythology. We have Sampo and Aino, Frey and Freya. Sampo and Aino getting twelve son and seven daughter. The first son, Seppo Ilmarinen, the first daughter, Maya. The twelfth son again, Lemminkainen, who when he is 27 years old, goes together with Jotsen, the swan, Jotsen, this girl, what is the most healthy and beauty in the family, with whom he is making again 12 sons and 7 daughters. The first one, Seppu Ilmarinen, the first daughter, Maya, and again the 12th son, Lemminkainen. Now the first 7 daughters don't make any children, so in the beginning it must have been the 8th, 9th, 10th or 11th who was the most healthy and beauty. Um, who become Jotsen, who become the swan, with whom he is again making this twelve son and seven daughter. 
when his 12th son become 27 years old, Lemminkainen, this first Sampo, who is the first Lemminkainen, he become Ukko. And Fre uh, Freya, Aino, she become Akka. And now we have a new Lemminkainen who created this 12th and 7th. Um, in this way they make like a repetition of their own family and this is very boring so they want to get some more people on the planet because what do you do with this 12 and 7 and this couple more all the time? No? So this Lemminkainen is not only making with one Jotsen this 12 and 7 now this other girl who is outside from them some become what we call Disa Stam mother D means when these children D the milk from the nanny, yeah. But D is also when the girls uh, drink the sperm 30 days before they become pregnant. And Sa means you get. So D Sa means that you Sa the D, you get the D. And D can be the milk, but D can also be D E when it relates to sperm. Um, now when this Lemminkainen and Disa make children, then out comes a combination which can either be, a, uh, out comes a child which is either a boy or a girl. If it's a boy who has the construction to, so he is good to be one father, he gets a title called Rabi. And if he is not so good to be father, he goes in the information system and becomes one Nar. When it's a girl and she is good to be mother also, then she will become a new Disa. So from Lemminkainen and Disa, becoming the, in that case new Disa. And if she is not so incredible to be mother, she goes in the information system and becomes one Sienare. So out of Lemminkainen and Disa we get four possibilities. Either it become Rabi, either it become Nar, either it become Disa or it becomes Siena. Now Rabi is again in sound. Ra is represented by the king Seppo who is the maker of the Ras. Without that he who is the head of the Ras or who is the maker of the Ras without that he is involved into the children making. And B is one animal that goes from flower to flower this bzz, 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 in the breeding system of flowers. Yeah? The bee is drinking nectar from the flower, this fantastic juice, what we find in this flower, coming from this little stem that is inside in this flower. Just like we have this little stem here, which has one neck from where it can come, this nectar, uh, this juice, which in the mythology is always relating to sperm. So when they are talking in all kinds of mythological stories that they are drinking uh, all this amount of nectar, they usually talk about this sperm. Because this Frey, this Sampo, he is the first one on the planet to have this sperm from where all these people are born. So if there now goes something wrong with this raw material, then we cannot exist anymore as human being on the planet. When all this sperm is gone, then we finish. No? So for these people, straight from the beginning, it was very important that we take care of this sperm in order that we can continue as one race of human being on the planet. Because there is the basic ingredient where we are all born from when it goes to one egg, which gives this power that this sperm can grow into one human being and it becomes either masculine or feminine and the masculine has this sperm and the female, the woman have this egg which in this combination always create the next generation. The nar is giving out information and this you can also see when you take nar and ar the other way around it's r a n and there we have again the combination of ra and n meaning knowledge. So he is giving out the knowledge of Ra, of the king in that way, through this whole system. The Disa, the same thing, she becomes like her mother if she is good to be mother. And if she is not 
good to be mother, she become one sienere. Sienere means you see, and enere means unite. So the sienere, they are in one information system on the female side, where these girls are involved in keeping track of the bureaucracy of people coming on the planet, and they do also all kinds of things. Uh, like with mathematic, they are very high in mathematic and do astrologic. So astrologic is also a combination in sounds where we have as, the aser in Udenma, we have true, true means the belief, means belief in root. So a belief in this nature system uh, of as, true, logic. Yeah? on which they built all this uh, race of human being, completely based on nature. In root we say nature, and also nature, nature, we can take in sound. There we have the combination, the other way around, of R, U, T, root, and A, and N. And A is Aser, and N is knowledge. So nature says also, the other way around, the root of the knowledge of Aser. Yeah? So all this is based 100% on nature. Um, this first class of the father and the mother, Lemminkainen and Jotzen, who create 12 sons and 7 daughters, uh, this family we call Piruet. Et means family. Ru means when you have peace inside you, Ruhe. And Pi is one ring. So Piruet means peace circle family and pirouette we still make in the ballet or in different kind of exercise we can make pirouette so it has always in our today association to do with one ring the next ad which consists of these children of Lemminkainen and Disa this Rabinar, Disa and Sienere this one we call Roos ad and Roos is again Rose and at a sim, the king symbol, and at again family. So there we have this Rosette family. Yeah, a Rus, we still can make today a Rosette in that form of one rose, and it's one symbol that you find in many countries, in all different mythology and in architecture, on buildings, everywhere we see this rose that have something to do with this king symbol of Rosette. This pirouette and Rosette are Aser, who live in Udenma, who speak root language based on this 29 sound where every sound has a meaning. Now they are one small group of people sitting there in Udenma and now they have the idea that maybe we should get a little bit more people on this ball. So now they create one system of ringlands. Yeah, we talk already much about the ringland Udenma um, but actually it is not a hundred percent ring, it is more a hexagram. And now they can make around this first hexagram, you can make six other hexagrams. Just like around one ring you can make six other rings. When you put rings you get always space in between. Yeah, between every ring you put around one ring, you have small spaces. That is why they make, they talk about ringlander ringlands but they have actually the form of hexagram so they fit completely together so it becomes like one football where the north pole is the Udenma hexagram ringland and then around that comes six more and around that you can put six more and you can put 12 more and you can put 24 more and so on and so on so they divide all this ball into ringlands uh, consisting of hexagram board In that way all continents become divided in Ringland and now in this Ringland they make one system of three class of people. They make Jaal et, Karl et and Trail et. We have Jaal men and we have Jaal woman, we have Karl men and we have Karl woman and we have Trail men and we have Trail woman. Now every ringland has, gets one bureaucratic center and in this center is one rabi, one nar and one sienare. 
the Disa, they stay in Udenma because they have to make with Lembinkainen this new generation of Rabi, Nar, Disa and Siena. But the Rabi, the Nar and the Siena go out to the ringlands outside to one center. And there the Rabi is responsible for the children making system and the Nar for the information on the masculine side and the Siena for the information on the female side. This Lemminkainen, who is making the children there, his father is now Uko. And Uko, he was, is the retired Lemminkainen and he is basically the all-father of these people inside Udenma, because he has been the father to all these people who live there. And now his 12th son is continuing that. So this Lemminkainen, he is making all the children in this ringland of Udenma. There's nobody else who makes children there, only Lemminkainen. Now we get a similar principle in this ringlands outside, where this Rabi become in this sperm system the father to all people, in, or the all-father to the people in this ringland outside of Udenma. Because this Rabi, when he come there, he makes children with Yal woman. And out of the combination of Rabi and Yal woman, we get Yal boy and Yal girl. And the Yal boy, when he becomes big, he is making children with Kar woman. And out of the Yal and the Kar, we get Kar woman and Kar man. And when the Kar man is big, he is making children with the trail woman and out of the car man and the trail woman we get trail boy and we get trail girl. Now the trail boy they did not have right to make children. So there it stopped. It don't become more class of people. But in this system you see that the trail boy and the trail girl are son and daughter of the car man and of course the trail woman. Yeah, but if we follow this masculine line, because it is based on the sperm of this oak tree that go out. So via the sperm you can follow this line very simple. The trail boy and the trail girl are born from the sperm of the car. The car boy and the car girls are born of the sperm of the yal. The yal boy and girl are born of the sperm of the rabi. The rabi is born of the sperm of lemminkainen and Lemminkainen is born of the sperm of Ukko. So in that system, they create one, one bowl with many ringlands, one earth with many ringlands, where Ukko in that system is the Alphader. He is the father to all the people in all ringland around the planet, where the Rabi is the Alphader to all the people in the individual ringland. Yeah? Everybody get it? <laughs> have a small break because I just find out that I have a complete vacuum in my head. <laughs> Rolling out now from this bowl what is called pirouette, rouset, in wooden the aser and Jaal et, kaal et, and trail et, the waner in the ringlands outside of Udenma. The Aser speak root, and now the Aser for this waner create based on the individual sound of the root language, one language which is much bigger, uh, because this nature language which, by which these people were born, by which Frey was born, it is limited in its amount of words. Uh, for describing the nature, with this now constructed Van language, based on the individual sound of this root language, they could make a much bigger language, much more detailed language. Um, in this way we get people on the planet everywhere, and P is again one ring, and pole is one pole. If we consider this ring to be Udenma, where the Asa start from, 
and under this is this pole, this P pole, uh, with this earth turn around. Also, this pole we have in our trouser, and P is this ring representing again more the female side. So the people are born from the people, the North Pole, from before ice time, when this axle of the Earth was perpendicular in relation to the Sun. Um, Lemminkainen, in the Waan language, he is called Sitaya. It's his title, Sitaya. And Sitaya means the children maker in Finnish language. Yeah, or breeder, they say also, by, by the animal you talk about the breeder. Yeah? In English we say the children make. Um, so he is represented in the sound by C. Yeah? C consists of the sound S and E. And C Taya is this guy who is rolling this seat out what you find also in this combination seat uh, ya is going out the seat from the seat uh, yeah, from the children maker um, this creating of children was made on particular days according to what we call almanacca in English we call it almanac. So we have a calendar, yeah, which are, represent all the days of the year, with all its festivals and everything. But we have also almanac, almanac, where we have a name for every day of the year. Now almanac, it's again consisting of sound, al, man and akka. Akka is... Uh, Akka is Akka, the, the Earth Mother, who is sitting there with Ukko at the North Pole. And Man is all the Man, Man, we all together, and Al means all. So all Man Akka, Al Man Akka is this woman through which all these people come on the planet. And now in the Al Man Akka there are certain days that belong to this creating of people on the planet. So we have the first one is 13 in 12 and 13 in 12 is Lucia and Lucia is this girl that symbolizes the idea for the woman to become pregnant so Lucia in light means also loose use means light C is again also this phallic symbol because these boys who are born from one swan, from Jotzen, these twelve, they have one C form of prick. We, and we, and uh, from this C is going out this system of seed from which all these people are born. And A is Aser. So we have Luz, E, Luz, C, A. One combination of sound that express on this day that those girls who have the feeling to become mother in the next year, they are supposed to have one dream that they have seen Lucia. Lucia is this girl that comes from the hill with the white dress and a blue belt and she has candle in the hair, one ceremony that you can still see in, in the north very often. I don't know about Middle Europe if we still do this kind of Lucia happening. But anyway, before Lucia is representing this idea that now they want to get children. So all these girls could come forward and say that they have seen in the dream Lucia. So they become chosen to be mother in the next year. If you didn't want to be mother, you could say very simple, you didn't have seen any Lucia in your dream. No? So they were completely free to choose there. And now, on Lucia Day, we get all this girl coming forward, and they are going on 24 in 12 to one thing called festival. 24 in 12, we have festival. Also, festival consists of three combination sounds: val, e, and fest. Val means election, e means this prick. And fest means one 
fiesta, one fest. So festival, the word itself says that you elect one E in one fest. Yeah? Now in this fest there are coming all these men who uh, are good to be father. All these guys who are good to be father, they put themselves on pedestal. And when they are standing on this pedestal and there come all these girls and now they can look, they know of course these people from the area where they live, but now they can see from which guy is in so good condition that I would like to get one child from him. These guys, they had really to be good, to be father. It was a very strict system in that time. Not every man could become father. And even these guys who was good to be father, they went to some kind of thing, uh, to some kind of competition to show that they were really in that condition to be father. So they come another festival two days later on, on 26 in 12, and this is called Boxing Day. And in this Boxing Day, um, they go again through all kind of they go through all they do all kind of exercise to show their physical prowess yeah so we have all kind of happening like they hop a bock they jump over one bock and uh, they do uh, some kind of boxing ceremony where they sit on one saw bock you can make two uh, cross from wood and then you put one tree on top and now two men, they can sit opposite each other on this pole, on this tree. And they tie leather sacks with grain inside to their wrist. So each man get two of the sack tied to his wrist. And now you sit like this opposite each other on this tree and you can start to swipe each other a little bit in the face. Yeah? And the one who fall off, he has been losing one part of all these different exercise they do during this day but all these exercises have something to do with one bok no one saw bok or hoppa bok or i don't know i don't get another one right now at the moment all kind of physical exercise they do which eliminate those guys who are not good enough to be father yeah and now is left these boys that have been chosen by this woman from who they want to get one child and now the woman who had been choosing the right guy, the one who go through all this procedure on Boxing Day 26 in 12, he get the right to be father, so she become mother. And the girls who have been choosing this guy who was not, who has been falling out in this ceremony, they had to wait one year more and choose again the year after and see that they choose the right one to become mother. So there was like one elimination process going on. Um, the next festival day, the next party day is the 31 in 12 where they make this thing what we talked about before where in this symbolic way they show the creation of uh, the life or, or of this earth by which they create this horseshoe from 10 which they heat up, throw it in the water and in that way show symbolically one process that has to do with the creation of this earth when it explodes from one sun into this construction where we sit on today. Uh, the next day, what come out of this almanac where they do all kind of different thing according to the days mentioned, is the 13 in 1. And the 13 in 1 is called Knut in the almanac. Knut. Knut means, is one first name, but it also means not, one knot, you can tie one knot. Yeah. So on Knut day, they teach the boys in all this family who become seven year old, one thing called sauna solmu or sauna knot. So it is one knot they can do in the morning when they go and wash themselves in which they can push their feet in their neck and they can drink down sperm. So this you teach from when the boys are seven year old because then they are still very flexible and when we do that from seven year old we can stay in pretty good condition. No? Then we come to the 24 of May, 24 in 5 and 24 in 5 is that day where that 
women who have been choosing that man come together for a period of one month and this month we call honeymoon. The 24 and 5 in the Almanac is uh, Helluntaina in fin Helluden's Dark in root, Helluntaina in Finnish language. Hell means again hell, un it's one combination shortcut of Uden and Taina is day. So hell Uden's Dark, we get also from hello, we get hello, hello, yeah, U become O in the time, so we have a different pronunciation. So we everybody say hello on this on this planet. You say hello to anybody. And on this Hell Uden's Day, this man and woman come together now for a period of 30 days called honeymoon. And honeymoon also you can put in sound because it consists of hun, e and moon. Now moon not only means this thing flying in the sky, also this is moon in root language. E is again this prick and hun means she. So honeymoon means that now in one month time, in one moon time, this man and woman are together where this girl now drink in 30 days, every day one shot from this sperm so that this sperm go in in her stomach and it become broken down in the stomach going into the blood and now the pump make that this blood with this sperm inside is going around to the brain make circulation through all the vessels and goes to the egg where it informs the egg that something is happening something is going to happen you know it gives an information it prepares the egg for to take in that sperm that she get now 30 day later on on the 24 in 6 now 24 in 6 is called uh, Johannes Johannes in the almanac Johannes we say in middle Europe and Johannes uh, in Finnish they say Johannes Nusitan. Nusitan means to fuck. No? So on that day they have always one big party where they make fire and in the heathen time this man is dancing around the fire and now when uh, the girl know that on that day 12 o'clock midnight they become pregnant they go out in the field and they collect seven different flowers and they put them under their head and now they wait for this man who come to put in the sperm to this egg what is already been prepared in this 30 day honeymoon festival honeymoon ceremony so now she become pregnant so nine months later on become born the children so the children in this lowest class in this uh, trail cast uh, they were all made in the same time so when you live together many people and all these women have children in the same time uh, they could take all together care of these children. So it was not only one woman with one child sitting in one situation where she is 100% uh, responsible all by herself in that situation. You could be one group of women and you could take care together because they all had milk in the same time and they all have children in the same time. So it gave them also an amount of freedom. So these are these festival days what are important in this creating of children. The 13 in 1, the 13 in 12 Lucia, the 24 in 12 festival, the 26 in 12 boxing day, this 24 in 5, this Hellwoodens day and this 24 in 6 uh, Johannes when they make all these children. Now these children, they are made in by certain character who are responsible for that. So the Rabi, of course, is that boy in this Ruset family who goes out from Udenma and he creates the Jarl. Now some of the Jarl, they are good to be father and they are in this sea line, in this line that goes out the seed from this Lemminkainen to create the next child. Uh, what become from Jarl and Karl woman, one car. And now this car, they are being chosen by this trail. So it was one 
caste system, but not one caste system as we think it today. When you was from the lowest caste, your father was from one caste up, your grandfather was two caste up, your great-grandfather was three caste up, and your great-great-grandfather was Ukko, no? he was the father sitting there at the North Pole. So we had a completely different association to this caste system before as we have it today. Later on we start to make like a marriage system within one caste and that makes a break between all these castes. So the lower caste, then we start to talk about lower caste in that way that they make children with each other, the caste above make children with each other, the caste above that and in that way we create like a physical and emotional separation between this caste above because you have nothing directly to do with it anymore. It's not anymore your family in that way. Now the NAR and the Sienere, they are in the information system. So also we have to have stories to go out to all these people who live in these different ringlands who are depending on the information, what is coming from Uko and Akka, they are at the North Pole. So up there, there are also these seven daughters who together with their father, Uko, are creating all kinds of story, which they transfer to the Nar in Hell. So the Nar, they are being educated in Hell. Hell is on the, on the festland between seven hills, and in front of Hell are seven islands. The seven islands are this, have the center island, Udens Ö, from where all this system is starting. And um, on the festland in hell, they are educating these Nar, who now go out to this different ringland with all this story, which they transfer to this Jarl, who transfer it to the car. Now the car, they are acting it out in the form of of a theater, a circus, by which this car, they dress up like these main figures, these mythological figures, they become present, they, they present these mythological, uh, these figures from the north in the mythological form to all these uh, people, these trail people who come to listen to the information in these places which we call Rasti. So one rusty is like a cross in the Swiss flag with four equal spoke and these rusty they are created everywhere in the nature and there all these people come together to listen to the information that is presented by the NAR in the form of theater. Um, the rusty it's in one circle and circ means one ring and L means the law. So in one circle you have the law of the ring where they play circ us. Us means like you have good feeling uh, for this circ, for this ring. So it creates circus in the form of animal. So now we have this car who become actors in the car who are in the information system, not the car who are in the children making system. The car who are in the information system become car actors, characters, who give out information in the form of anima. So now we have these three main characters on the masculine side, um, Ukko, Seppo and Lemminkainen. Now Ukko, he is represented in the theater, in the circus, as neck class. And we have Seppo, who is represented in the circus as Stur class, and Lemminkainen as Lil class. Lil means little, the little class, Stur class means the big class, and neck class is coming, is Per. Per or Uko is neck class. Neck comes again from neck. This, we have neck over here, but we have also neck here. And from this neck, is coming one class of 12. You can see this 12 sun. They are in all, symbol in all symbolism represented as one, uh, how do you call that in English? One, uh, one class of grape. 
a bunch. If you see a bunch of grape, you can find in many places, in all kinds of decoration on the wall, all kinds of painting and things. You see always one bunch of grape with 12. 12 of them are there. And there is the father, who is the creator of this bunch of 12, this 12 son. Yeah? So, class means one bunch, in this case 12. And he is neck class because from his neck is created this class. So we come to neck class and he is dressed up, this car, er, car actor dressed himself up as one old bok, as one neck class. And then there is one big bok, he gets this kind of costume of big bok and then everybody know, oh now it's Seppo who is speaking, it's the king who is speaking. And there is also one little bok. And when little Bok, this car actor who has this little dress around him, little Bok dress around him, everybody knows that now Lemminkainen is speaking. And then there is also the fox, uh, also a king symbol. King is representing moon, and moon has two sides, has a light side and a dark side. Sun has light on all sides. So that's completely clear. When sun shines on the moon, we have a light side on the moon and a dark side. Because the moon doesn't shine by itself, it's reflecting the energy from the sun, the light from the sun to the earth. Now, when the fox, he is kind of, uh, how do you call that, listic? He is kind of sneaky, you know? he is smart bastard, eh? he is foxy. You know? He can be very foxy, so he can give out information what is a little bit pushing people to take care about that side of nature where you can get into danger and everything. So that is also one side what belongs to the information system of King. You know? yeah, he can be light side of moon when he is making his story, like Stuerbock. But he can also make, or Stuer class, but he can also make information which is a little bit more sneaky, so you start to think and wonder that ah, we have to do like this and this and this. No? So in the circus there is many more animals, no? and in this form they give out information to all these people uh, who are living in these ringlands outside of Udenba, to all these Waan people. Um, where shall we go from here? Huh? Seca. Okay. Um, badam, badam, badam. Now they have also one uh, system by which they are offering the sperm. Because in this system, in the sea car uh, system, where it goes down the sperm uh, from Ho to Ko. Uh, if we look the alphabet, we see that everything, uh, that this creation of people starts in Ho, and Ho is Ha, and Ho, ho and O. Ho is Hell, and O is the stream that run out. Yeah? And now from Ho it goes via E, which is this Lemming Aiden, who created this Rabi, who go out to this ring land, creating the Yal. So we get Ho, E, Yi. And then we come to Ko, because the Yal uh, create the car, who create the trail. But the trail, don't, boy, they don't make children by themselves. So this stream is running out from uh, Lemminkainen via Rabi to Yal to Kal. So they are in this Ho, E, Yi, Ko, the stream, the O, is running from Ho to Ko. Yeah? And then we come L, M, N, N, it come another story again together with Oak Tree. But from Ho to Ko, the stream of sperm is running out. From Hell to this car men who are in the children making system. And this one we call the C car. Now there is one other system, because the sperm is going out all the time from there, and there was only this limited, this amount from which we start there. They have one other system that... Um, first I can explain a little bit what actually goes on up there in Udenbach. 
a little bit more detail so you get an idea of this kind of um, let's say bureaucratic system what has what create all these people in all these different ringland around the planet um, we don't know exactly at the moment how many ringland there are uh, we are not so far in that story but if you look this earth and you start to divide all this ringland what have the same size as Udenma a diameter of 240 50 kilometers um, and you start to project all this on one completely tropical bowl yeah so we have no desert and no ice and we don't freeze anywhere so practically all this bowl can be inhabited when you put ringland in this like a beehive system around the earth you can see that we must have probably more than two two and a half thousand ringland before ice time so that means that when every ringland has one rabi one nar and one sienare uh, we need already to have seven thousand five hundred of them about if we take the average. Now, they all come from the combination of Lemminkainen and Disa, who create Rabi, Nar, Disa and Sienre. So in this law of average, we will also have 2,500 Disa, if they make these children. So altogether, this Lemminkainen, to make enough Rabi, Nar and Sienre for all these different ringland, he has to make uh, at least uh, 10,000 times these are pregnant in order to get uh, 2,500 Rabi, 2,500 Nar, 2,500 Sienre and all these these are. So he have one heavy job this guy sitting there at the North Pole because he starts to make children when he becomes 27 years old. When he is 27 he starts to make 12 son and seven daughter. Um, to get 12 son and seven daughter he has to make again with the law of average at least 23 children. Yeah we get 12 boy, 11 girl, we have 23, uh, 24, 25 but let's say he has to make at least 23 children before he has his 12th son. So that means that takes already 23 years, that process. So when he starts when he is 27, he is 50 years old when he gets his 12th son. Now he has to wait till his 12th son becomes 27 years old, who takes over that job. That means that from 27 to 77, he is sitting there in Udenma and he has to push in out all this sperm to create all this Rabi, Nar, Disa and Sienre that every ringland around this bowl have uh, all this bureaucratic system no? from which all these people are created. So that means that he is making more than 10,000 children in a period of 50 years time or let's say around 10,000 children. His own family and this, this Pirouette family and also this Ruzet family. So that means that uh, in 50 year time to make 10,000 children he has to make about 200 every year. No? So he can't move so much away from Udenma. This Lemmikain, he has to sit always in Udenma creating new children on the planet who are involved in this bureaucrat system of creating people everywhere else. Um, now all this sperm would go out in that way. But now there is this sperm, it created the sum pool. So sum means we are all sum, we are all together. Yeah? And pool means tree, in this case always oak tree. So we are sum pool, all the men they become sum pool. Yeah? Um, but now we have also this guy Sepu, Seppo, Seppo Ilmarin, who is the king. So we have the sound C for the breeder, for Lemmingainen, who create one stream going out from Ho to Ko. But now we have also Sepu, Seppo. Which Seppo has the sound C, which is S-A. So we have S-C, what is S-E, 
and we have say what is SA and Pu, meaning oak tree. Um, Let me get them. Yes. That is much better to take first this part of this temple there. I think so. Maybe we go there. This whole system rolls out to all these different ringlands. <coughs> and now they create something what is called one appreciation system for this one family structure that rolls out over all this planet. So now the people in all these different ringlands, you have there many handicraft people, and they start to make beautiful objects. Yes, 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 I am already... Yes, yes, yes. I'm already in down part, not in top part. Um, switch it off one second. So I smoke one beady, so I get a little bit better inspiration in my brain. It's completely hidden, completely hidden. Hidden, it is about hidden culture, one hidden culture from before Einstein. And actually was working on that principle in Finland up to the year 1050. Um, then come, come a new information system and that makes that we don't anymore live according to this philosophy of heathen people. Uh, we uh, become what we become and we are as we are today, no? based on this new information system. Before ice time we had a system where we had one all father. So we had actually one person on the planet who in one sperm system was father to all people on the planet. So we will talk about how they make that before Einstein. <clears throat> uh, we have in that time two group of people who speak a different language. One group we call Aser, and the Aser they live in Udenma, a ringland at the North Pole before Einstein, that had as a center hell and a diameter of 250 kilometers, so one ringland at the North Pole center is hell. In that time, the axle of this Earth was perpendicular in relation to the Sun. So when the Sun shines and the Earth is turning, you have at the North Pole 24 hour light, at the South Pole 24 hour light, and when you come to the equator, 12 hour dark and 12 hour light. So this region at the North Pole that was land was called Udenma. Because in this heathen philosophy we talk about the sun as Uden, Ma means the earth, the mamma, the, the mother on which we all live. And the South Pole in that time was, at, uh, was in the Pacific, in the water, so there was not living any people. Now, in Udenma live this Aser and they consist of two class of people. Maybe we catch her for a moment, otherwise we get problems. <laughs> yes. Um, the Aser, they live in Udenma, consisting of two class of people. And outside of Udenma, we have ringlands, other ringlands, who are covering all this ball. One ringland at the North Pole, a diameter of 250 kilometers, consists of a hexagram. The borders are in hexagram form. So this whole ball becomes divided like a football in this hexagram form of leather pieces. Yeah, so outside of the first ringland, you can put six more, and then you can put six more, and you can put 12 more, and 24 more, and more and more and more. So all this ball becomes divided in ringlands. Now in these ringlands, Side live people that we call Vana in the Finnish language. The Asers speak Root language and the Vana speak Van uh, language. So in all these ringlands outside, the people speak the same language, but created from this Aser in Udenma who speak Root language. So only two different languages on the planet, one in this North Pole ringland and the rest all speaking Van language in all these other ringlands. Um, the Aser consists of two class of people, 
The first one we call Pirouette, and Pirouette is a family that consists of one father and one mother with 12 sons and 7 daughters. They have more of them, but these 12 and 7 are the ones who have a title, uh, who have a function in this creating of human being before Einstein. The second class is called Ruse Ed. And Ruse Ed consists of four types, four kinds of people, men and women, where the men who are into the children making are called Rabi, and the men who are not in the children making are in the information system and are called Nars. And the women who are into the children making program, they are called Disa, and the ones who are not into the children making are called Sienare. Now, the program. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, it's okay. All right. Um, in this ringland outside, there live under this banner, they consist of three class of people: Jal, Kal, and Trail. Now, in that time, in this ringland at the North Pole. Uh, not, there was only one man who was making children in that area. And this man, he was called Lemminkainen in the mythology. So I will first explain a little bit about this Lemminkainen. Uh, Lemminkainen, when he becomes 27 years old, he goes together with one woman who is the most healthy and beauty on the whole planet. So she becomes elected like one Miss World and brought up to Udenma. And now Lemminkainen is making with this uh, uh, girl, Jolten, when he is 27 years old, 12 sons and 7 daughters. Um, the first one is called Seppo, the first son is called Seppo, and the first daughter is called Maya. Seppo is the king and Maya is the queen. So in this heathen system, king and queen are brother and sister, and they don't make children. Then we get the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh son, and all of them also don't make children. Only the twelfth son, when he becomes 27 years old, gets the title Lemminkainen, and now he gets presented from the people on the planet, from the Baaner, one girl who is the most healthy and beauty, and she becomes the new Jotzen, the new swan, who together with Lemminkainen is again making twelve son and seven daughter. Now, this Lemminkainen is not only making his own family of 12 and 7. Um, when the 12th son, when he is starting to make children, when he becomes 27 years old, the old Lemminkainen, he becomes Ukko. And the old Jotsen, the old swan, she becomes Akka. So we have Ukko and Akka, who are the retired Lemminkainen and swan. Yeah. Now Lemminkainen is making this 12 and 7, and now he also makes children with Disa. Disa are the stepmother, and now the combination of Lemminkainen and Disa create Rabi, Nar, Disa and Siener. So this is the second class, what are also children of Lemminkainen. And this class is called Ruse Ed, where the first class of 12 and 7 is called Pirouette. Ed means family, and uh, Piru, it's one, how to say, Piru, they are all in sound, all these names, and Piru means actually, Ru is. Under this banner is getting one guy called one Rabi, who is responsible for the children maker, making. They get one Nar, who is responsible for the information system, and they get one Sienere, who is uh, responsible for the information system on the female side, on the woman side. Now, this Rabi is making children with the Jaal. We have Jaal class, Kaal class, and Trail class, and the Jaal consists of men and women, Kaar, men, and woman, trail men and woman. Where the Rabi is making children with the Yal woman, and from the Yal woman and Rabi comes one Yal boy or one Yal girl. 
When the Jarl boy gets big, he is making children with the Karl woman, and the combination of Jarl, Jarl man and Karl woman creates Jarl, uh, Karl boy or Karl girl. And now the Karl boy, when he is big, is making children with the trail woman, and out from the trail woman and the Karl boy come trail boy and trail girl. Where the trail boy, he has no right anymore to make children. So there, it stop. Yeah, we get two class in Udenma and three class under the banner in the Ringlands outside from Udenma. Now in that system, every trail boy and girl in the in the sperm, in this tree, in the sperm tree of family, what we create on the planet in that time, every trail boy and girl is the son or daughter of the car man. Every car boy and girl is the son and daughter of the Jaal man. Every Jaal boy and girl is the son and daughter of the Rabi. The Rabi is the son of Lemminkainen with Disa. And Lemminkainen is the son of Ukko, the retired Lemminkainen. The son of Ukko and Akka. Ukko the All Father and Akka the Earth Mother. So in that system, we had a pyramidal structure where we had one Al Father sitting at the North Pole and everybody coming out in one sperm tree living all over the planet. So we actually had one Al Father on the planet. Um, in this system, uh, this system was working according to certain days of the year where they have different festivals where they decide who is making children with whom. And uh, in these ceremonies that they had on these particular days, um, come forward uh, girls in uh, 13 of the uh, 13 and 12 are coming forward the girls who want to have uh, who want to become mother in the next year and now in the 24 of 12 they are choosing from these men choosing under this man from who they want to have one child so in that time we didn't have marriage we were men and women and the women were choosing from which man they want to have one child so on the 24 and 12 they decide, ah, I like this guy, you know, and we take him and we make one child with him. And now um, they have to go through certain ceremony, this man, to see if they was really good to uh, be father also. Because it was not so easy in that period, in that time, to be father. Um, these ceremonies, they go through two days after, on 26 and 12. And this day is called Boxing Day. And on Boxing Day, they are doing all kind of, let's say, physical exercises to show how good men they are. No? Uh, so they jump over box and they sit on one saw box, like you can make two crosses from wood with one tree in between and then this guy they tie one leather sack with grain on both wrists and two sit opposite each other and smack each other in the face and now the one who falls off he has been losing one part of the ceremony um, if he lose too many parts uh, then this rabbi in the ringland who was the highest in the ringland he could say that uh, you are not good to be father this time and if one girl had been choosing that man to become father uh, then she had bad luck because she had to try again next year and choose another one. Yeah, so it was not so easy. No? They were quite strict in that time with all the system. Anyway, now these men and the woman, they, uh, they go their own ways again, their separate way, and now they meet on 24 of 5. And 24 of 5 start one period which is called honeymoon. And this honeymoon period is lasting from 24 in 5 to 24 in 6 when they are making uh, the children. So they elect them 24 and 12 and they make them 24 and 6, six months later on. Now this whole story it goes in sound. So I don't want to bother you with enormous amount of explanation of all this meaning of the sound uh, that you can ask the people who have been following in the seminar later on otherwise I have to start to prove too many things. You know? I don't like to make it, it becomes too big, it will take too many hours. So we go a little bit quickly through that part, uh, just so you get an idea. 
The whole story is based on sound of the root language which is spoken by the Aser in Udenma and who create on the individual sound of that language one language which is spoken by the Baner all over the planet. So it's a different language but consists of the same A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the same alphabet. Now, in that period, the honeymoon was lasting you make before you make the children. So it was a bit different than we get later on when first you marry and then in the evening you have one big party and then you go to the bed with your wife and then you make one child and then you go on honeymoon. Yeah, that is the system what we get uh, still a uh, hundred years ago. No? Um, in that time we have honeymoon before we make the child because the word honeymoon expresses something and in sound hun means she, e means uh, the prick of the man, the dot on the e is the sperm coming out and moon means moonshine outside but moon in root also means the mouth. So hun e moon means that she is drinking in 30 days from 24 in 5 to 24 in 6 to uh, prepare, prepare herself to become pregnant. So now every day she drinks the sperm from that man for 30 days and in that way the sperm go in the stomach, it become broken down into the blood, the pump is pumping it all around our body and in that way it also passes that egg that will come out when uh, the sperm become put 30 days later on. In that way the egg already received the information that here is going to happen something and is more ready to take in that particular sperm and made this whole preparation uh, for the girl to become mother more complete. Now they had all kinds of other exercise how they prepare themselves to be father and mother in that time. So when you were seven year old as one boy uh, they taught you one knot, knot called sauna knot. And the sauna knot is like one yogic exercise where you can put your feet in your neck and in that way when you are seven year old you are still very flexible. These boys they can take their prick and put it in their mouth and drink their own sperm. It was very easy when you start with seven year old. When you are 36 like me it is very difficult, you break your back and it's not so incredible to perform all this exercise. But anyway, uh, they make this, uh, this thing every day from when they are young up till they die. So they always circulate the sperm in their own body. In that way the sperm for the man was the petrol for their brain and giving information to all parts of the body. Now the girl who want to be mother, they have also, uh, they have also their uh, ceremony and now we have uh, one root, what is called in root language moor root and in English language we call it car root. Now we have men, uh, we have car men and we have car woman. So now the, car, the woman in general, they were using this car root, carrot or moor root uh, to prepare themselves to be mother. So when they start to change, when they are young, when they become uh, more women, they start to make masturbation with this carrot to can make it in a nice form no? and they can prepare themselves to be mother because the women have to uh, be uh, wet inside, they have to have the fluid inside so they can become mother. Yeah? When we dry out, when the women dry out in the life then it comes to that situation that many times they like to make one child but it's not work anymore. This machinery because it has not been kept in good condition. No? So before they use for that the carrot. So men they drink the sperm and the women they use the carrot to prepare themselves to become father. Mother. Huh? Mother. Uh, mother, yes of course. <laughs> uh, okay, now this Lemminkainen he is in one very funny position because he is like the children maker for all these people in this system. So this Lemminkainen, when he is 27 years old, he starts to make this 12 son and 7 daughter. And uh, all of them don't make any children. He's the only one. 
So he is basically with the sworn, with Yotes, and repeating his own family line just like his father. But now he makes also children with Disa to get Rabi, Nar, Disa, and Siena. Rabi, Nar, and Siena going out to all individual <laughs> ringland around the planet. And the Rabi there making the Yal at, the Yal man making the car at, and the car man making the trail at. So they all do that, but in this lower caste, which is the 90% of the people on the planet, they are all electing this man, this car man, from who they want to have one child. Now, in this ringland system, what is covering this planet, we have more than two, two and a half thousand ringlands. Now, every ringland gets one Rabi, one Nar, and one Sienere, who come out from the combination of Lemminkainen with the Disa. Now, this Lemminkainen, he starts when he is 27 years old to make his own family. Uh, to get 12 sons and 7 daughters, he has to make, the swan is making every year one child. Jotsen make one child every year, where the rest of the girl on the planet, they make child every other year, if they want to be modern in that time. Um, <clears throat> but the swan, because she was elected as the most healthy and beauty, um, she put herself forward for that position. Yeah, if you was the most healthy and beauty and you didn't want to be mother, uh, okay, you didn't have to. No? But those girls who had that feeling that they want to be mother, the most healthy and beauty, she become Yotsen. And now it will take at least 23 years before uh, she get her 12th son. If you take average, one year one boy, one year one girl, one year one boy, it will take about 23 years. So now it takes 23 years from 27 to when he is 50 before he has his own family together where he gets his 12th son. And now he has to wait until his 12th son becomes 27 years old to make again with one Jose this family of 12 and 7. So now he has to wait until he is 77 years old before his 12th son is becoming the children maker just like himself so he can retire and become Uko and Jotsen can retire and become Akka and this new Lemminkainen going together with the new Jotsen. Now in the meantime this funny Lemminkainen he is also making children with Disa to get one Rabi, one Nar and one Di and one Siener for every ringlet. Yeah, every ringlet has this structure where the Rabi become the father to the Jarl, Karl and Trail, um, so that he is like the all father in his ringlet. Now, when we have more than two and a half thousand ringlet, or about two and a half thousand ringlet, you can divide this earth in, uh, that means that we need two and a half thousand Rabi, two and a half thousand Nar, and two and a half thousand Sienere. And in this combination of Lemminkainen and Disa, making this Rabi, Nar, Sienere and Disa, there will be also, of course, two and a half thousand Disa coming out, because it's always half and half. No? Um, that means that this Lemminkainen, he has to make ten thousand children, in order to get one Rabi, one Nar and one Sienere for every ringlet. So he is sitting for 50 years, from 27 to 77, before his 12th son is 27 years old, up in Udenma, this ringland at the North Pole, sitting in the sunshine, and he has nothing else to do than to make children from the morning to the evening for 50 years' time. Yeah? If he is making 10,000 uh, of this Rus at Rabi, Nar, Disa and Siener, plus this 20, uh, this 12 son and 7 daughter, uh, that means that in 50 years he is making more than 10,000 children, which means an average of 200 a year. So he didn't have so much time to travel outside of his area uh, to make all these people on the planet. Otherwise we couldn't continue in that structure they had been creating in that time. So in that time, to be in one different class, it was not um, it was not such a big thing. It meant only that you, uh, the boys and girls of the trail, uh, were the lower caste, and their father was from a higher caste, and 
their grandfather was still a higher caste and their great-grandfather was a rabbi and their great-great-grandfather was Lemminkainen and their great-great-great-grandfather was this Ukko. No? So it was always the older people in your own family, your, per your father, on that father's side where you uh, was either uh, higher or lower class. Yeah? It was anyway all one family, so this casting in that time uh, didn't mean anything that you were better or worse. You were just the son or daughter of your father. You know? um, later on, when we start, when the system didn't exist anymore, they start to make children within that caste because this trail boy, they were not allowed to make any children. So later on, when they become more democratic. Uh, when the trail boy and the trail girl start to make children, and the car boy and the car girl start to make children, and the yarl boy and the yarl girl start to make children, and maybe the rabbi and the deesa start to make children, then we start to get a many more caste system where we didn't have any connection with each other anymore. We were all now separate from each other, so from this one tree we start to create many branches, many family lines. Before we was one family line, one tree, uh, where this Ukko was the All Father and this Akka, the Earth Mother, through which all this creation took place. Um, now this honeymoon thing was for this uh, trail, um, car and yarn class. It was no problem because this um, trail girl who choose one ya one car man. Um, they could be nicely together in, the, in from 24 of 5 to 24 of 6 and she could drink 30 days uh, without any problem from this man to prepare the child. But this Lemminkainen sitting there in Udenma, he has to make average 200 children a year. So how can he serve uh, to this Disa who want to become mother, who become mother, to get this Rabi, Nardisa and Siegre, how can he drink, uh, how can he give to drink 30 days uh, to every Disa? If he has to make 200 pregnant, that means he should have 6,000 days in the year. No? It's not possible. So these girls would have been drinking him completely empty and he would be sitting there completely useless to continue the next, next generation. No? And so they had to solve this problem, no? Um, to solve this problem, they were very inventive in this time, you know, they had all kinds of sexual combination, what for me was also quite uh, something to hear about when I heard it the first time. And to solve this situation, to give this Disa anyway the idea um, that they had been drinking from this Lemminkainen, they have been creating 30 kilometers east from hell, the center at the North Pole from where all this uh, construction was running, they had been creating one temple. And in this temple, um, this temple is in one place called Akampesa, the nest of Akka, and Akka is the earth mother. So Akka, she is coming there and has her information system there into Akampesa, to this beautiful place there in the nature. Close to the temple are coming all these Disa who want to become modern. Uh, and now in Akampesa, these Disa, they are not drinking from this Lemminkainen 30 day, but from the Rabi there. Uh, how shall we say? You want to change the day? Here we take a minute. Get me in that machine. Okay. Um, the Disa, they come to Akampesa, and now the Disa, they are they are drinking from the Rabi. But now they are making the children with Lemminkainen, so to have anyway the idea that something in this Rabi uh, consists of the energy of Lemminkainen, this Rabi they go in the temple with Lemminkainen. 
So there is one temple there under the ground in the bedrock. And in that temple, there is uh, all kind of room. And in this room, there is one divan. And in this divan, it is one style of couch, this Rabi and Lemminkainen, they can make 69. So now they exchange the sperm, so that now the Rabi consists of that sperm of Lemminkainen. And now uh, this Disa, she is drinking from this Rabi in Akampesa for 30 days. So with one shot to one to this Rabi, he, these many Rabi, the sons of him through Disa, they can give something to drink to all this girl who now want to become mother or who become mother so that we get this new class of people. Now, the center of all this uh, happening take place on seven islands. And these seven islands, they are in front of the coast of hell. Um, there is one island what is called Bokland, and this is the island where after the Disa have been drinking 30 days in Akampesa from the Rabi, the Disa are transported to Bokland, to this island. And then there is one channel between that island and the next island which is called Freysher. And on Freysher there is one hill called Boxberg, and on that hill is one tower. And in that tower, this Lemminkainen, he is sitting and he is looking over the channel to Bokland, and there is beautiful girl there, hundreds of them. And now when he gets inspiration, he is taking one boat and rowing across that channel, and he goes to Bokland, and there he sees one Disa, and from whom he get inspiration. So they go together in the boat and row back to Freysia where he put in the sperm in this tower on Boxberg. So there they have this ceremony uh, to make this child. And then uh, he bring her back. And if he straight away have again inspiration, it come another one. And they row across this channel and go to Boxberg. He has to make at least 200 these are uh, pregnant in one year, so if he hurry up, he could take little holiday in between. No? But basically, he couldn't move away from that situation. So as a Lemminkainen, he was born in one family, staying there for 27 years, before he started this job for 50 year time to start to make pregnant all these Disa in order that we get enough Rabi, Nar, Disa, Sienre, who are making again from this Rabi, this Yalet, Kalet, Trelet, Baner, in all this ringland around the planet. So first when he retired and become Ukko, when he was around 77 year old, he could actually start to go around the planet and see what he been creating, you know, or what has been coming from him. So there he can start to travel in all this different ringland and get some idea of how the thing is going. Um, now this Rabi, they go out from Udenma and they come in this ringland creating the Jaal and the Jaal create the Kaal and the Kaal create the trail. So also uh, this Jaal, also this Rabi and oh, now I start to get out. Um, let me see. Um, in this system, by making all these children and um, all based on the sperm going to this egg, when they create so many people, all the sperm is going out up to this car uh, class of people who is creating the trail. The trail boy, they was not included in that anymore uh, because they don't make any children. But now to get back some of that sperm up to the father from where they were all coming, who was sitting at the North Pole, these people, they had also one offering system. So they have one children making system that go down and then they have one offering system that go up. And this offering system is created in this pagan culture on, uh, in starting in carnavals. We have something called carnaval, uh, where bal means election, 
ne means uh, the knowledge of oak tree and kar is this uh, uh, kar class of people uh, who in this ceremony is not in the children making program so we have yal men who are making children and we have yal men who are not making children we have kar men who are making children and kar men who don't make children and the trail men don't make children at all the same with the girls we have yal girl and yal uh, yal girl who make children and who don't make children and so and also in the car exactly the same and also by the trail we have girls who make children and who don't make children now this offering system is going through this line of boy who are not into the children making program so in the carnival there come all these people in one beautiful place in the nature and there they are dancing uh, they have one big party there and in all this trail uh, are there together and there is one car who is their father or no who is not a father but who is uh, from one class higher up and he is looking all this trail and now he get inspiration to ask one trail if uh, this tra if he can get the sperm from that trail so that trail is offering then the sperm to this car man now straight away when that trail get this honor from this car who is one class higher there is 50 other trail <coughs> who um, give straight away their sperm they wank it out no and they give it straight away to that one boy who is chosen by that car yeah and now this car and this trail who become chosen who now have been receiving from 50 of his friend this sperm are going to one place called Offerlund. So Offer means one offering place. And Lund is one beautiful place in the nature with many trees. It looks a little bit like one park. No? So everywhere around the planet you find this kind of Offerlund. And there the trail is giving the sperm to the car. Now the car, he is going to one cup valley. In Finnish language, language they say kapelli or kapel uh, in English chapel. So kapelli in sound again have all kind of meaning. So ka is asana's ka. Asana are these people who live in Udenma and the sound ko stands for this car class of people. It can mean the man or the woman but in this case when we talk about this offer system, this particular offer system I talk about, it is about the car men. And in this way, in, uh, yeah, oh sorry, we have kapeli, and peli in Finnish means one play. But when you put it in sound, this peli, then you have the word pel and e. When E is this masculine machinery sitting here and you pell it like one orange, then the head comes out. No? So pelly means actually that you, uh, how you say that, you show your head, uh, the down head, yeah, not the up head. So in that way, in this pelly, in this play, they take out the sperm and now in this cup pelly, uh, where there is one, uh, oh, that's one other one, in this cup pelly, the car, the car is giving to the yard. Now the Jarl, he is going to the center of the Ringland. Every Ringland has one temple and there he goes to see uh, the next caste up and that is the Rabi who is the Alfather to these people in that Ringland. And there they go in the Tempeli. Now Tem means fire or uh, light uh, but also sperm. So it has all this association and Pelly is again this play. So the car and the Jarl, they go in the Kappeli and the Jarl and the Rabi, they go in the Tempeli. So now this sperm has been going from all this lower class of trail up to this car who are not in the children making, up to the Jarl who are not in the children making, up to the Rabi who is the father to all these people in from his Ringland and up to Udenma, up to the North Pole before ice time. 
and um, there they go to this. There they go to Seven Hill in Hell. So Hell is built on the coast, surrounded by Seven Hill, and in front of the Seven Hill are the Seven Islands, where we mentioned two of them, where this Lemminkainen is making these children. And on this Seven Hill, there are seven temples. So they call this hill, they call them the uh, Shu Heliga Beriet, the Seven Heliga uh, Mountains. Yeah, Helica today they make holy from that, but in that time in root it's Hel I Ga. Now the sound Ga means going, E is again this machinery here, and Hel is this place at the North Pole before ice time. So now this Rabi, they are going to the seven uh, hill where there are the seven temple. And in this seven temple there are these ten brothers from between the first one, who is the king, and the twelfth one, who is this children maker. Yeah? So in the seven hill, there sit, in the seven temple, there sit these ten brothers, and now these ten brothers are... Um, now these rabbi, who come from all these different ringlands around the planet, they are coming into Udenma, and Udenma is divided by one river, and over that goes one bridge, and there they are welcomed by Maya, the queen of hell, who is bringing them to this seventh temple, where now the, this rabbi gives the sperm to this ten brother in this seventh temple. And now this seven brother, they go to the exa this ten brother, they go to the center island in front of hell, where is the exact North Pole before the ice time. And this island is called Uden's Ö. Uden meaning the sun, and Ö meaning one island. Now in Uden's Ö, on the exact North Pole, there is one place called Valhalla. Val means election, Hal means one hall like this, and A means the Aser. So it's like the election hall of Aser. And <coughs> Valhalla is one building with one sal and two rooms on both sides. And in this Valhalla, where is the exact North Pole, in that ceremony is sitting Ukko, the Alphader to all the people on the planet. And now these ten brothers, they are offering the sperm to Ukko. So that in this offering system of drinking and transferring the sperm, this Ukko is sitting there at the North Pole, in this 24-hour enlightened place, where he has been again, after being making all these people on the planet, he is receiving in this drinking system all the sperm back to his brain. So every trail, everywhere around the planet, they know that when they give the sperm to this car, that they are offering for the brain of Ukko, from where is coming all this story and uh, this information system that go out under all this banner all over the planet in the information system, and at the same time in the children making system where all this sperm go out and create all these people on the planet. Um, what shall we take next? Two minutes break. Huh? Two minutes yeah, two minutes break. Otherwise, I um, I have to collect my head a little bit. In uh, in this time, we had a whole life that was hundred percent based on nature. And we were living very much on all kind of sap or teas or juice coming out from the green of the nature. Um, there are uh, two kinds of leaf in the nature on trees and bush, uh, what in English have not uh, no other name, no separate name, or not that I am aware of. Uh, in the root language, the word leave means life. So it's exactly the same uh, for life in root as for the leaf in the tree in the English language. 
you have one kind of leaf through which the sunlight can come through. And you have another kind of leaf which doesn't allow sunlight to come through. That one where sunlight can come through we call leuf and the other one we call blad. So palm blad, but uh, birch leuf, birch leaf. Uh, the leaf, they are very good to make tea from. So we have all kinds of bush and tree which before the women were going out to collect this kind of leaf which allow the sunlight to come through. And now uh, the sap that is in this leaf in Finnish language is called magla. In root it is called sav. So it is in English a sap and you collect this sav out of the leaf by heating up fire. You make fire, the human being is the only uh, species that live on this planet that use the fire. So the human being actually needs the fire because it's only through the fire that we can take out the sav, the sap, the magla from this leaf in the tree. Now this leaf in the tree is a whole world that belongs to the woman because as the man uh, brain is working on this petrol what he have in his egg uh, the women have are taking much energy uh, like ma mama they have much relation with earth especially with this green on the earth uh, by taking out through hot water leaves from these trees that you can dry in the sunlight you can put these leaves in this hot water afterwards and in that way through the hot, the hot water will take out the magla from the leaf in this tree of this uh, will take out the magla from this leaf so you make tea <coughs> and now you drink all this tea um, this creates all kinds of association which is both good for the brain of the man and the woman but especially for the woman and now in the word magla in Finnish language also is the same as the juice what the women have in their organism. Yeah, so like we have the sperm, they have magla. And I don't know the word for that in English, but anyway in Finnish language it's the same. So it is a similar consistency that we find in the green of the nature when we make tea, but also you find it by yourself. Um, now, as these men were in that system offering for the brain of Ukko, the woman could, in exactly the same system, offer for the brain of Akka. So they had also one system where the trail girl was offering to the car girl, to the, who was uh, not in the children making process, who was giving to the Jal, who was giving to the Sienere, and the Sienere was going back to Udenma and giving to these daughters, these seven daughters, who could again give to Akka. No? So it's exactly the same system of offering as by the masculine, who was all offering for the brain of Ukko. You had exactly the same on the female side, offering for the brain of Akka. Now, that creates two information systems, where both this masculine and feminine have one information system rolling out via uh, the first daughter, who is the queen, Maya, and the first son, Seppo, who is the king. Now, this Seppo and Maya, they are staying in one uh, castle called Rasepuri, Raseborg, which is 80 kilometers west from hell, west from the center, 80 kilometers, you find this castle. And from this castle, they create their uh, information system going out to all this banner in all these different ringlands around the planet and in appreciation for this system the people sent up beautiful thing made a handicraft to the king and the queen to uh, Seppo and Maya um, Seppo and Maya they are in root language called Ers and my. So we have one combination that we in English call your majesty in root language would be Ers my estate. 
yeah, where heirs would refer to the masculine, to the king, and my to the queen, with the combination of aesthetica, aesthetic, beautiful object that are handicraft created by all this banner, by all this human being, in appreciation for this system that create all this one family structure. So now every ringland you find handicraft people and they are making beautiful things from uh, this pure material, from gold and all kinds of stone and thing, and they make beautiful objects that nobody wants to destroy. Now it's so beautiful that you want to keep it forever. So that is basically the meaning of the word aesthetic, that something is created and because of its beauty and everybody can recognize it, nobody wants to do anything bad to it. So it can also be forever because it is made of material uh, that can last forever. And that we find in the gold. You know, gold doesn't rust like rust like silver. If you make something from silver, it can also be very beautiful, but the time will make that the silver is rusting and will disappear. But when you make something from gold, it will never disappear. It will be here forever if you don't destroy the object that is made from gold. So these people, they make beautiful objects and now <coughs> they are sent, they sent from every ringland, one object, the most beautiful created in that ringland, to the castle of uh, Ers and Mai, of Seppo and Maya, in Udenma, in appreciation for the system where Lemminkainen create all these people. So it arrived, more than 2,000 objects, every generation of Lemminkainen, this 50 year period where he is the children maker, and from every ringland come one object. and become shown in the castle of the king and the queen so that the people who visit there they can see what beautiful thing people make all around the planet. So they get many thousands of objects and they are in that castle up to the moment that there start one new Lemminkain and his 50 year period where he is creating all these people on the planet and again people make handicraft beautiful objects and again the most beautiful one from every ringland becomes sent up to Udenma to this castle of Seppo and Maya. Now of course in that way they must make place there because otherwise they will drown in beautiful things pretty soon. So now under the temple in Akampesa they are making in the granite one storehouse. Yeah, this particular area around the Gulf of Finland in the south of Finland this is all completely uh, how do you call it, uh, granite bedrock. So it's stretching many hundred kilometers and it's a massive stone that goes very deep into the earth. <coughs> so this temple they build uh, under the earth, this temple which they use for this ceremony where they make the 69 story, this Lemminkainen and this Rabi. But now under this temple they make like a spiral roadway going into the earth. And on the side of that roadway they make one chamber with three chamber around where they can store one sal with three chamber around where they can store this beautiful object that come in the period of one Lemminkainen into the castle 80 kilometer west from hell where Akampesa is 30 kilometer east from hell. <laughs> so now every Lemminkainen uh, in this 50 year period the people are making one room for him under this temple along this spiral roadway where he gets his own room. One room that symbolizes his period through all this beautiful object made by people and now in front of the door to that room, in front of the entrance to that room, they make one life size statue from him from gold and they put that in front of the door so you can see ah that is this Lemminkainen who has been staying in that period and from that period has been created this and this by these people. So again beautiful object coming up, Lemminkainen period 50 years and again starting a new Lemminkainen so they empty out the castle and store all this thing in the next room they have been preparing. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. So in the end it's become one enormous spiral under the ground, a roadway that gets larger and larger and larger, with one room after the next room after the next one after the next one, which symbolizes all where are in symbol all these 
artifacts created by human being in appreciation for one system where we all people on the planet were one family having one owl father and one earth mother. Um, it is the time that create this, this construction to be very big. Now, the entrance to this temple is lying uh, in Akampesa under one construction called Ette Stupa. And Ette Stupa is like one rock in the nature or one cliff in the nature, one hill in the nature from where um, before people went when they wanted to leave this earth, when they didn't want anymore to be in life on this earth. So in the heathen time we had one uh, different death than we have today because today dying has become one process and in the heathen time this process was eliminated so we were more like the animal if you look the animal in the nature you see that it goes around very nicely it's never sick because it knows how to use the nature and how to be in the nature but there comes one point where this animal cannot walk anymore and when an animal can't walk anymore it dies the same day it's finished straight away and it was basically the same with the human being but we gave a little exception because when we get problem to walk we can go around with the help of one stick yeah so the human being get one stick and now you can walk around still in the nature and see your people with the help of a stick but you also come to that point where you can't go around anymore with the help of that stick that means that you sit in one place and the next thing you know is that now you are starting to die you can't move anymore and from this place where you find yourself in that moment the only place is under the ground but this can take uh, longer or shorter time that we don't know and that we call the process of dying in the hidden time when you find out that you go around with your stick in the nature but you feel that now pretty soon this day is coming where I can't go around with the help of that stick anymore then they uh, choose one date where they go to at the stupa now we have this pirouette, roos at, jaal at, kaal at and trail at at meaning family and we have at the stupa and stupa means to fall like you fall in the war, you don't die in the war, is still an old expression uh, that we have from centuries before even. Yeah, you never go and die in the war, you fall in the war. We didn't have this kind of war in this heathen time, but we had this at the stupa, where you fall, your, you go out, you go away from your at, you fall out of your at. So this nature place, we find also in Akampesa, and Akka, she is the Earth Mother. She was the highest woman on the planet, and she had her private at the stupa. So when she walk around with her stick in the nature, and she find out that now my time is over pretty soon, she invite all her family to uh, come and join into that ceremony. <coughs> and in that ceremony, um, she. Uh, pass away all her thing that belong to her so that she doesn't have to make one testament and she says thank you very much for a nice time to all these people and now the two strongest men in this family they create what they call one golden chair which they make by hand so with two men you can make like one square and now this uh, woman doesn't have to walk with her stick up the hill up to the Etterstupa she become carried up there uh, these two men, they carry her up there and on the back side of this Ette Stupa, they make some wood, one like a staircase structure, and now they carry her up there to the top of this Ette Stupa, and now they place her up on this Ette Stupa. So she come up like this way, and now behind here it goes down, let's say 15, 16 meters or something. Yeah, It goes down to the ground, so it's a little bit higher place. And now she has to be able to stand on top of that hill, on top of that rock with the help of one stick. If you can't stand on top of Ette Stupa with the help of one stick, you were a big shame for all your family. So you had to choose the day right. You have to make the decision by yourself. And now these two men walk back and they join to the rest of that family who stand at the foot of Ette Stupa. 
And now next to the Etherstupa there is like a sundial rock with a sundial on top and when the sundial shows 12 o'clock then Akka is lifting her stick up to Uden, to the sun. And in that moment everybody looked to the sun. Everybody who is in that ceremony. And there could be thousands and thousands of people in that ceremony because the Earth Mother went away. Yeah, so many people came to that ceremony there. Um, they all look away to the sun when she raised her stick because dying was your private business in the heathen time because the minute of course she raised her stick she can't stand anymore and she falls backwards down from at the stupa to the ground. No? So everybody look in the sun in that ceremony. Now they say that you die on the way. Uh, we can find out, I don't know. It's too early. So. Uh, they die on the way and when they are lying there on the ground uh, these two men come again with one stretcher, with one bar and now they put um, they put her on this stretcher um, and bring her up on top of this mountain where there is a prepared uh, uh, burning place with much wood and now she is carried up there and they put her body on this fireplace and the family makes one ring around this fireplace and look uh, when Akka is burning to ash. Now, when the ash, in the end there is only ash left and ash is the driest substance that exists on the earth. It can be nothing more that has been alive dry than ash. Now, in the heathen time, they believe that the um, that the fulgia, or what you in English call the soul, is in the body, and it is transferred through the sperm. So every body consists of fulgia, masculine and feminine, but only the masculine have this tap by which you can take out this fulgia, this soul, in the form of sperm. So in the sperm is fulgia, and this goes to the egg by the woman. And now, together with that energy, what is in the egg, it creates a new human being, either masculine or feminine, which is full consisting completely out of fulgia. But when you born, when you die, and you burn this body, in the end, this fulgia is in the ash. And now they collect this ash in one sack of one ox, and they put this ash in there, and they put it under your family tree. Now we all belong to oak tree in the heathen time, so all this line that go out from this rabbi have been planting oak tree in Udenma, around the castle of Seppo and Maya. And now they put this ash in this ox uh, or in this sack under the oak tree that has been planted by your lion father. Now, when the ash is under the tree, it mixes with the earth and it becomes wet again. And now the roots of the tree are sucking that fulgia, what is in that ash, what is now in wet form, in the sap system of the tree, through the root, to the stem, through the branch, through the head, to the leaf of the tree. So now the fulgia go out from the ash into the leaf of the tree, and now the sun rays that shine through the leaf uh, make that this sap what is inside, this machla that is inside, which consists of this fulgia, uh, goes out in the form of damp. So now they say that the fulgia has a masculine quality as long as it is in liquid, like going from sperm uh, to one egg into the body, uh, and then in when it goes, when you are burned in the form of ash in the ground, where it still is, uh, where it becomes liquid again, and then taken up by the tree, because the tree can take up this ash or this fulgia, what is in the ash, and now it is in liquid form up to the time that it is in the uh, in the leaf, and now the sun rays make that it become damp, and there in the damp 
system, this field yeah, get a feminine quality. So now in Udenma, before in the hidden time, wherever you die on the planet, you were burned and your ash was brought back to the oak tree in Udenma from that line where you came from. So now the earth is spinning, earth is turning and this earth has one center where is the exact north pole and the spinning of the earth creates something what we call centrifugal craft. Centrifugal, centrifugal, how do you call that, power, yeah? Okay, and this centrifugal craft, uh, power make that now this fulgia would become taken out from the leaf of the tree and is now in damp form there, has this female quality, so in different mythologies you see it as small angel flying through the sky or as one white dove with a twig uh, in, in its beak, always symbolizing the female aspect of the fulgia when it go out from the leaf in the damp system and through the centrifugal power of the earth to the exact north pole to Valhalla where there is one little like hole in the ground where is the exact north pole where before ice time all this energy that come out or this fulgia that come out from this oak tree is going. So this Valhalla is the sent air and air is this um, air is the air inside is the magla aspect of the nature so this leaf uh, side of the nature and scent has to do with the centrum. So the center and the centrifugal craft make that this fulgia go to Valhalla and now in Valhalla there is uh, this room where automatic through the rotation of this earth all this energy goes, all this power go and in that room in Valhalla is this Lemminkainen making pregnant this Jotzen, this swan from where, come, from where come 12 son and 7 daughter. So he is in that place where all that fulgia that come from all these different human beings on the planet is collecting and he is in exactly that same place where all this energy come where he create through the swan, through Jotzen, 12 son and 7 daughter where the 12th son when he become 27 become the new Lemminkainen creating uh, through the Disa, the Rabi, Nar, Disa and Sienre, where the Rabi go out from Udenma creating Jaal Et, Jaal Et create Kaal Et and Kaal Et create Treel Et. Uh, and in that system of dying uh, we all come back in this fulgia in the form of ash back to Udenma and back to this hole in the North Pole. And in the same way through the offering system where this trail offered to the car, the car to the Yal, the Yal to the Rabi, the Rabi to the tent in Tiu in the uh, seventh temple in hell, who go to Valhalla to offer for the brain of Ukko, and on the female side exactly the same for the brain of Akka. Um, do you want to ask something about this, or shall I just continue? <laughs> Uh, well, it goes out from the leaf in a kind of etheric form, so it is there in the atmosphere, but you can't see it. So it is there like waves, you know, like radio waves, television waves, you can't see them either, but they are there. And they can go through something. Yeah? You can send straight through one concrete wall to somewhere else. So if our fulgia, or if the soul of the human being have that kind of etheric, aether, uh, etheric quality, I imagine that if it goes in that way from our body in ash form, where it becomes liquid and becomes taken up by the tree uh, through to the leaf, where the, the fulgia leaves from the leaf, yeah, it's the sound thing yeah, where you find this association, where it leaves, the leaf is leaving from the leaf, the life is leaving from the leaf. Yeah? Uh, to this hole in the North Pole where the rotation of the earth make that it come in that place around which they build one room where he has his fucking ceremony. You know? 
Yeah, uh, I think that in that way it must be just as easy for that material to be absorbed in these bodies who are making this physical exercise there that create the next generation of people. No? So in that way the soul is going round and round and round. No? The fugia go round. Yeah, so it's, but it's only one place where this can happen and that is at the North Pole because of the centrifugal power of the, of the spinning of the earth. So today it would, doesn't work anymore, this system, because we have a different North Pole. So now also when we die and we burn, uh, in, a same, in, in the same way this fulgia would go to the North Pole, but there it stays like in pretty undercooled uh, position. No? It doesn't happen so much with it, because who wants to make a number at the North Pole? No? Yeah? Yeah, sauna, much better, but maybe too hot. Um, <coughs> let me see. I wanted to say something. Yeah, this is one system that was functioning before ice time. No? So when we had a completely different North Pole than we have now, and. Uh, this system roll out in that particular form and is always recreated and recreated and recreated uh, up to that point where we start a uh, second period and this is the time we call ice time and that uh, occurs when the earth actually falls over about 23 degree and that make that uh, we get a new North Pole and hell stay about here. So hell is where today is Helsinki. Hell was destroyed in the year 1050 by one army coming from Central Europe, sent by some Pope. And after that this other system didn't function anymore. But anyway, this shifting of the axle of the Earth create a new North Pole. And in this falling over of this axle of the Earth, enormous amount of water damp was released from the ocean. So we get all this water them flying in the sky, but now the centrifugal power of the earth makes this all this water them, it's collecting, uh, most of it collect at the North Pole, where now because of this position in relation to the sun, uh, we don't have any more this tropical atmosphere or trop tropical condition because of our position to the sun. Uh, it starts to cool all this water, what is there up at the North Pole, and comes down in the form of ice, and is covering a very big part of the Northern Hemisphere. The same phenomena we have in the South, but in this other axle system, uh, we will find that, that like today, the equator, uh, that most land will be north of the equator. Today we have also most land north from the equator, but if you put this axle back to where it was before, you will see that even more land is north from the equator. So also in the south, of course, the centrifugal power make that we get ice over there in that particular part of the year where that side of the earth is turned away from the sun. Now it come down all this water damp in three month time, uh, and in down in the form of ice and it covers the planet in one ring going from the Pyrenees, the Alps, the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, Mongolia, northern Japan going over to about San Francisco, New York and back to the Pyrenees. So there we get an earth with a hat covered uh, by ice. Yeah, so all the people who live in that area couldn't exist anymore. Only in the region south from the Alps, the Pyrenees, the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, Mongolia, and south from, uh, let's say, Canada. No? Um, with the exception of one area, and that is this Udenma area, because of a natural phenomena that originated in the Gulf of Mexico. So in the Gulf of Mexico, you have some, it starts something what we call the hot Gulf Stream, and this comes across the Atlantic and reaches the north coast of France uh, and shoots through the English Channel northeast into the Gulf of Oslo. Now they are all, in that time, all hot water from the Gulf Stream reached by Oslo and there it rebounds and goes between Denmark and Sweden today and reaches the coast of northern Germany around Lübeck 
and from there it can't go any further, so it shoots northeast straight into the Finnish Gulf to that place where today is Petersburg or Leningrad as it was called before. Now there, this hot water can't go any further anymore. So there is an all the time amassing more and more hot water in that area where it can't go any further. So it starts to create a roussette in this Finnish Gulf, what makes that the north side of the Finnish Gulf, which is southern Finland, and this area around Petersburg and what is today called Estonia, the northern part uh, bordering on the Finnish Gulf, this area remains ice free and is surrounded by mountain of ice going kilometer high up in the sky. Now that makes that we get a relatively small area in the ice what stay ice free. When you come already um, in the East Sea, so not in the Finnish Gulf, but in the East Sea, because there this hot water doesn't collect. It collects in this Gulf of Finland, there everything is again already covered with ice. So the hot water there is going under the ice and reaching into this Finnish Gulf, but there this amassing of hot water makes that this area remains ice free. And now start one period, what is called Altland East. And Altland East you can take in sound again, where Alt means uh, all, Land means land, and East means ice, in this root language. Now we know Altland East means, in that case, all the land, ice. And we know exactly which land has been under the ice, because it must be all that part of the planet which has a name with land in the end. And the only countries that have land in the end are Rusland, Finland, uh, then we have many land inside Sweden today, so they call them Westjötaland, uh, uh, Westmanaland, uh, Östrajötaland, uh, Norland, uh, Södermanland, uh, Smorland, they have many land inside Sweden today. Then we have Norland, Island, Grönland, Scotland, England, Ireland, Holland, uh, Frankenland, um, what we have more, Saxland, and Poland. And then we have a little bit more of this land. So it's actually all the area north from the Pyrenees Alp uh, going over to the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, all around, uh, also uh, northern part of America. It was called Rusland before, but the last part, Alaska, they sold in the last century uh, to, this, uh, to the Americans. No? But anyway, all this area, what was under the ice, what we today call an arctical area, this is the land on the planet. Straight away when you come south from there, you have Spain, Italy, uh, Greece, uh, Hellas, uh, Turkey, uh, Morocco, Egypt, Argentina, Hindustan, uh, all of this is not land. Yeah, with the exception of Thailand, but it was Siam before, and New Zealand, it was created by the Dutch, no, uh, not so long time ago. But basically you can see that all this land have another name, whether you go in Africa, whether you go in South America, all of this area are called, um, all of this area are of course lands, but they don't call their, the name of their land is not land. Very difficult. So Altland is more or less describes one period of uh, the life of human being on the planet where this particular land that we mentioned uh, was under the ice with the exception of this area in Udenma where this Arthur could continue but now separate from all these tropical people uh, living south from this ice border. So before ice time we have only one race and we were all tropical with um, brown and black eyes and dark hair. But now under the ice time, the whole situation changed. So this one family structure become divided into first 11. So we get one group, the original Aser sitting in Atlantis in one hole in the ice. And now the tropical region become divided in 10 king systems. Uh, this 10 king system create 10 before, before we had one Alphader, so we get one tree of people, but now we get ten regions 
the original Alphader system sitting in this hole in the ice, so we get 10 regions with 10 Alphader who are based on this 10 sun in between the king and the 12th sun, Lemminkainen. So they become like children maker in one of these regions in this tropical part of the planet. So now we get 10 Alphader which create 10 different rays which based on this one mythology, what we have from before ice time, create 10 different mytholo uh, ten mythology with all different name of exactly the same function and character as we have in this one mythology from before ice time uh, that roll out from hell. Now these Ban people, they are based on Ban language, one language from before ice time, but this language, which today the Finnish language is left from, is such an enormous language that you can, different ruler in this different area, this different alpha, they all take aspect of this one language and create one own language in their area in order to separate little bit uh, to show through the language the difference between these people living in these ten different areas. He is there, you know, he is there completely. Yeah? Okay, yeah? I try to collect, <coughs> to collect a little bit the situation where we have been yesterday, you know, where we left off. In the meantime, this aeroplane can fly nicely further on and uh, we see where we get, no? We went yesterday through all this breeding system and this offering system. Um, in this breeding system, where they go according to this uh, almanac with all these festival days and everything, like we talked about 24 in 12 and uh, 24 in 5, when they start this honeymoon ceremony and 24 in 6, when they make the children. There is also one other nice detail there, that this man who has been making the child with that woman, they decide on, on the name of the child and the name of the child become picked out of the almanac. So one of these 365 days of the years we have, they all have a name in the almanac. Like 24 in 6 is Johannes, Johannes. In Finnish language, Johannes in all the, and John in all different languages. So if you are born in March, and your uh, name become Johannes, then you become bapti baptized on your name day. Um, the baptizing ceremony in the heathen time was a little different from the one we have today, um, because in that time you become baptized by the sperm of your father. So for that ceremony they have something what they call in Finnish uh, Kaste Lusica. And Kaste Lusica is like doop shit or one spoon by which you make this baptizing ceremony. So now this man, after he has been making this child, has to come back uh, later on in the year, in the first year of the child, on its name day, where it receives this name and or where it becomes baptized by the father who have this spoon where he put a little bit of this sperm inside and then they give it to drink to this child. So they didn't use this water like we use today, so the kid gets a cold. In that time they use a little bit this sperm. Um, further we talked about uh, this appreciation system where they bring up all these beautiful gifts that go to the castle of, uh, of Ers and Mai, of Seppo and Maya. And also for this appreciation system they have one name. No? They call this appreciation system Jehovah. It's in a way one system, no? because if you put it in sound, it again tells one story, where Ye means giving, Hof means the court, and A means Aser. And the court of Aser is the court of Seppo and Maya in Rasapuri. So all these beautiful things are given from all these different ringlands going up to Udenma to this court of Aser, the court of Seppo and Maya. So it becomes one system 
what is Jehovah you give to the court of Asa. No? Um, what did we talk more about? Um, I think we talked about quite a lot, no? but I don't anymore can remember what exactly we went through. We anyway came quite much, quite well through this uh, paradise time. We came to the ice time that occurred through the shifting of the axle of the earth. And this one is called the first Ragnarök. So Ragnarök means the destruction of Asa's system. Yeah, now there are in this story three Ragnarök. And I think that we continue today a little bit through this ice time, maybe a couple of details more. And then we will come to the second Ragnarök, which is the end of the ice time and then we go on to the story to the third Ragnarök that was in the year 1050. So in this story there are three Ragnarök, three times there has been occurring, a happening, what make that this Asus structure or system it become destroyed. And there are only three Ragnarök in this story. So there doesn't come any more big destruction of the system. Uh, this has already been happening in the history. So no more Ragnarok according to this saga. Uh, we described already what happened uh, in this Atlantis story where all this land that we have north from the Alp, the Pyrenees, the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Casper Sea have become full of ice so that it creates uh, two different cultures on the planet, this arctical inside Atlantis in this hole in the ice and this tropical in this ring outside of the ice where we get ten different king system where now each king become our father in his area. So instead of one race with one our father like we had in the paradise time we now get eleven race, one arctical and ten tropical, who each have their own our father. In the meantime, the original one sitting in this hole in the ice, and from where comes into existence all these different kind of vegetation, different kind of agri, uh, different kind of plant and tree, and animal that belong and into an arctical culture that can stay and survive in these completely new circumstances. So under the ice time, we need. Uh, in this hole in the ice there is six months dark so you cannot anymore pick banana, papaya and coconut from the tree. The, all the year around they have to create one system in order to get all these things what they need. So they have only the summer time, the summer period during six months where they can grow all kind of uh, food, uh, food stuff which they can store and su supply themselves with during the winter time. So for that you start to have, you, you need uh, a form of agriculture, what was not existing on that scale before ice time, when we were more uh, taking all the things, the all the nature gifts from the trees and the ground that were there. Now they had to start to make a little bit of organization in order to have enough food during the six months period where you couldn't really go outside, you stay nicely inside in your house and uh, have all your food and all your wood there so that you can make have nice fire and stay in quite nice circumstances without to do anything during this six months on the outside. <clears throat> it creates a whole new uh, article vegetation where you find certain trees who grow very quickly and die very quickly. They are not like these tropical hardwoods that can exist for thousands of years and they grow very, 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 very slowly. You know? They get very old, but there is not such a big turnover in this tropical tree system. In these arctical trees like pine and birch, they can grow in a couple of hundred years to one size where you have nice piece of wood uh, and you can, they die by themselves, so you can take them for your firewood. Uh, in these new circumstances also come arctical animal. So from this goat, what is the only animal with spoltened hoof, with cloven hoof before ice time. Yeah? So we have this animal which have this split foot. The only one before ice time was the goat. And now from this goat, 
in these new circumstances appear cow, sheep and pig and from peacock we get chicken. So we get all these different animals coming out from this tropical what we had from before who could provide these people with all the things what they need. You know? The sheep they get wool in these new circumstances we start to get all these animals who have fur, who have much fur. So this could be used of course for people also by shaving the wool and making all kinds of nice things from that. And the pig uh, become uh, still today in Scandinavia, Scandinavia is one animal that people like to eat around Christmas time. Um, we get this cow who provides with all milk and milk produce. So they could stay quite nicely in this hole in the ice in that period of the year where they couldn't go or where it was not so incredible to be outside. No? Um, <clears throat> in this ice time period where this pirouette and russet people are completely separate from this tropical people, they don't need to make so many people anymore because they are not going out anymore from North Pole all over the planet so they don't need to have this system of seven daughter and twelve son now they start to make one system with seven son and seven daughter uh, where the first uh, where the first son uh, he is and the uh, he is and the king and the children maker in the same time now we know that uh, Seppo, he is representing Moon Shivan, the Moon Disc, and Lemminkainen is re representing Sul Shivan, the Sul uh, Disc, the Sun Disc. No? So in that period they say that, uh, we talk that the Moon Shivan and Sul Shivan go together. So there is only one Shivan who is representing both function of Seppo and of Maya. And in this period we could talk about them like uh, Raphael and Sarah. So now we don't talk about this uh, Lemminkain and uh, Jotzen or Seppo Maya. We have one period where there are only these two figures, Raphael and Sarah, representing these both sides. Um, in that case they did not have to make so many people in their area. It was mainly to live in these completely new circumstances and wait now till the ice time is finishing and in this whole period under ice time to keep all the knowledge of uh, the hidden time from before ice time. To keep up with all the stories that had been happening before and to keep all this, uh, this sound system and to adapt to these completely new circumstances uh, and, and only to wait for this whole period to finish so that they could re-establish the contact again. Now in the meantime in under this tropical this ten different king system in the tropics they create also one new system what become the king system over there where the king is also like children maker and information system in the same time so we have ten uh, tropical race and one of them is this uh, peking peking create one system in east asia what we call uh, china today and then next to that is another system and they are the king, he is called Narkasul, the children maker, the Alphader is called Narkasul. And Nar, we already know about this Nar, and Kaas means one hill in the nature, and when you put one building on that, you can tell from that Kaas, and you have one castle. No? Um, and Sul, we know, is Sul, just like this P king, where P is again ring, and ring is wooden, and ring is Sul, and he is king in the same time. Next to this Narkasul system, we come to the Sultan system. So we have Sultan system going out from East Creta and into the Middle East. And from West Creta is going out a system of Rasul to the Middle West. Yeah, the northern part of the Mediterranean and the northern and southern part of the Mediterranean in the western direction. 
Then in Africa we have one system with Suleiman. Um, they have all this soul inside, so from all this character you can see that they have something to do with sun, no? but actually they create one king system, what is more based on moon. But anyway, they are these children maker and information in the same time. Uh, the name from these other characters, uh, who are in these different parts in uh, Middle and South Indian, what we called it before, uh, today America, I don't have. Um, but anyway, maybe in the time we can find out about them when we get to know more of the mythologies in that region. <clears throat> they should be easy to figure out because they all have this, they have all this kind of soul combination inside from where you can deduct something about these different systems. No? Uh, in this uh, king system, the first son of the king become the crown prince and the crown prince become the king when the king dies. So, to give one example of how this is functioning, um, we can take out this uh, Narkasul system in South Asia because I think there we are most familiar with the names of all these different figures that represent all these things. No? Um, Narkasul has one area in South Asia and there he goes together with the most healthy and beauty of that area and she becomes the swan in that place. Now she goes together with Narkasul and they are the first son that come out from this swan and Narkasul become the crown prince and he become king, he become Narkasul when Narkasul died. Now the uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth that come out in this combination, they become Maharaja. And now they divide South Asia in different areas where these Maharaja are staying as Al Father in that area just like the uh, just like the Rabi before. Me. So we get Maharadia and Maharadia you can also again take in sound no? Ma means the land, Ha means you have so Maha means that you have the land yeah? you have that area and there is again Ra, Di and A Ra is in the sperm, Di is drinking and A is this Asa Ukoaka um, this Maharadia he goes together in his area with the most healthy and beauty and out of this combination come Rajas on the masculine side Rajas Radias yeah, so they get one area certain radius there in this Maharaja territory and now this Raja um, are, are the same like the Yal in the uh, old system from before. The Raja, they are creating the car caste. Still today you find all these people with this car name in Hindustan. And out of this car are coming the Gati. The Ga Ti. Ga is going, Ti is Ti. Uh, relating to the spur <coughs> or to the tail. So, the whole area is called Hindistan. Stan means one center, Di means drinking, and Hin is another name for this Ukko, who is sitting at the North Pole. Um, so in exactly that system as we had before, the Gatti boy, they don't make any children, and the Gatti uh, girl are choosing one car, the big car. The car is car girl uh, are going together with the uh, Raja. The Raja is the son of the Maharaja and the Maharaja is the son of Narkasul and this swan there.
So it's exactly the same system, but now also the information is coming out from the king in the same time. So they don't have a difference between the children maker and the king. They have both function in the same time. Now this system is working exactly the same in, uh, in Peking, where they have, instead of Maharaja, they call them their Mandarin. And in the Sultan system, they're also the same. This Maharaja is called Emir. And we have this Raja, they are called uh, Pasha there. And you have one class that are called Askari, that are, called, uh, that are the soldier today. Um, so everywhere around the planet you have this, in this tropical region, you have exactly the same system, but now all divided in ten. Now this is going on very nicely, <coughs> under one whole period, under the ice time, and then we come to uh, the second Ragnarök, where again it becomes one destruction of this wooden mass system. where the ice has slowly been going down in four periods. In four periods there is a retreat of the ice. It comes down and it pulls back. And this is also because of the hot Gulf Stream going along, uh, eating into the ice to the north at the same time. So, 10,008 years ago, we come to that situation that this ice that now eats not, that not uh, that hot water that comes from the Gulf Stream of Mexico is not all going into the Finnish Gulf anymore. In the same time, more and more of that hot water is eating along the coast of Norway to the north and makes like a break between the ice that is covering this bowl from the North Pole over the continent of Scandinavia now it become like one break in between. So this ice on the continent of Scandinavia becomes separate from that whole cap of ice that is lying over the northern part of this bowl. Now in that situation, when this break becomes in this hole in the ice, this ice that lies on the festland of Scandinavia starts to move south in the form of glacier, because it's heating up slowly, slowly, all this area. So 10,008 years ago, it started this happening. Now this they call the second Ragnarök because when this ice started to move uh, from the festland of, or from, of Scandinavia, direction south, of course it will all go nicely over Udema and squeeze everything and everybody there. No? So they had to get the hell out of the place. Yeah? Uh, this movement of ice make that the nature the rocks in sweden and finland are nicely polished you know? they come all this stone with and this ice make that the rocks there are very nicely to lie on. in the summertime if you go in finland you can lie nicely on the rocks without it you have something picking in your ass you know? They ask her, they know that it is happening, they are sitting inside this hole in the ice, so they can see very clearly the situation that goes on, uh, they can find out how this thing, they see the ice is retreating and that it will come, this break in the ice, and that they go out, that they have to go out. So for this reason they create boats, and in these boats they put all the agricultural produce or seed, that relate to this article culture and this article domestic animal like cow, pig, sheep, uh, chicken, uh, hare, uh, all these different kind of animal that belong to an article culture. And uh, when shortly before the second Ragnarök is happening, they put all this nicely in these boats and with these boats they scale the ice and glide nicely down on the other side. Ice is not so high anymore. And they can see that, uh, they could already see when they climb up there, that now the East Sea in the western direction uh, is open, that there is open water. So they glide down on the other side, down this ice, into the water of the East Sea, and now they sail to uh, Gotland. And Gotland in that time was still called Bokland, uh, one island south of Stockholm. 
which is like a big uh, chalkstone uh, island where are caves inside. In the northeast of Gotland are caves and they are called Lumelunda caves. And now this Rafael and Sara with their seven son and seven daughter and this whole system of um, of arctical animal and plant move into these caves to wait for the finishing of this second Ragnarok. Um, this place is very incredible because north from this island you have um, like a bay called Norviken which is the water between Sweden and Finland. So you have Sweden on this side and then you have this bay, Finland on that side. Here is the Finnish Gulf and now down here you have Gotland. Because now when the ice comes down along Norway, Sweden on one side and Finnish coast on the other uh, Finland on the other side, on both the uh, land side it will take stone and everything with it. So you will be completely squeezed if there is coming all this kind of stone floating by. But <clears throat> because north of Gotland there is all this water, there is only ice that comes floating from the north to the south on that side, which breaks nicely up, bypassing this island. So this island of Gotland never become polished like this coast uh, or like this lands, uh, Sweden and, and Finland. No? So Gotland still today, it's like a little bit this chalky, pointy cliffs, no? not polished like uh, Finland and Sweden. So they sit in these caves and now the second Ragnarok is lasting three months. <coughs> and then they come out of these caves when all this stuff have nicely been floating by. And now they start one article form of uh, life on this island of Gotland where straight away they divide again in 12 sons and 7 daughters. Because now there is an enormous region north from the Alps and the Pyrenees where are no other people living because this tropical culture didn't move up to the north. The tropical culture stayed nicely in this Mediterranean and southern climate and more south climate. Um, so they have something to do to fill up this enormous empty space, what we now call the Arctic part of the planet. So they make again straight away 12 and 7, 12 son and 7 daughter. And uh, they start again to create this pirouette and rouset. Um, Yalet, Kalet and Trelet, first on this uh, Gotland. <coughs> and afterwards they moved some of them over to Öland, an island a little bit further south from Gotland, and now they were waiting for this ice and water to melt down to such an extent in Finland that again rivers started to flow and they could make use of the river system to go inland there and into Rusland uh, to again make Aser in Udenma and Baner outside Udenma. Now that took 1000 years, so they stayed from 10,008 years ago to 9,008 years ago on Gotland, on Bokland. And um, 9,008 years ago they decided to come back to Udenma. Um, three years before that they already had been sending some group of people to create on that, in that area of Tuna where uh, Rasapuri is, one, on one cast, on one stone, in Tuna Shun, in the lake of Tuna, one winter palace, one winter uh, palace, this uh, Rasapuri, in order that the family could stay uh, in that place during these heavy winter times that they have up there. So they built this castle, Rasapuri, there, and it was ready 9,008 years ago for the family to move back to Udenma. And there they start again to create Aser inside Udenma and Baner outside. Exactly the same principle as before ice time, but now in an Arctic form, not anymore a tropical form. Um, in that moment that they move out from that system, that they move back to Udenma, uh, two of the more than 12 sons of Lembinkainen and Jotsen they decide that they go their own way 
and one of them is called Sven and the other is called Dan and they go from Öland with Sven's Karar, the group of men and women, Kar of Sven and Dan's Karar to the western uh, European uh, festland. So first to Sven go to Sweden, he goes to Uppsala and creates there one center and Dan goes to Jylland and creates one center in Jylland, in this part of Denmark. You are out? Okay, good. Have a cup of tea, yeah? Have to do with, uh, with the wheel, so the live wheel, and the live wheel goes out in uh, Yule Monat, no? so that is the 12th month of the year. It's the Yule month where this live wheel is ro running out. Uh, still today in English we talk about Yule tide. Uh, so that is this all relating to this period where we pass through uh, under and after the ice time, this uh, darkest day of the year, and now the light is coming again. Yeah. So in the same time when the light is coming. When the days start to get longer again, they cre uh, in the same period is this ceremony or festival where this life will start to roll out again over all these different areas. Now Dan and Sven, they create the two, uh, two king system. And this king system is called, uh, we, from this king system we know them as V-King. Um, Sven is in Uppsala, Dan is in Jylland, and they create two Ed, the uh, Unglinga Ed in Sweden, or from Sven, from Sven, and Paul Ed from Jylland. And now all people are born from this uh, two kings. So these two kings, they become our father in their area. And um, they start uh, to populate this Western European Arctic site. So these Sven people are moving over to Norway and from Norway to Iceland and to the north of England. And this Dan Ed, this Paul Ed, goes to Southern Europe, uh, to Middle Europe, to Poland, uh, Saxland what we today call Germany, and to Holland, uh, France, and to the south of England in the form of Anglo-Saxon. So there in England meet these two different lines from which they also uh, in the north create different king. You know? We get different king line coming out from them who, who rule in these different areas. So in England there become two of them. So they start to haggle about that long time in the history that who is now the real king in England. Is it this line that comes from Unglinget from the north or is it this line from Paulet coming from the south? Now this West European Arctic people, they didn't base their system anymore on eight power, they used base it on four power because hell was in Udenma, in Finland, so they couldn't take hell. They create their own hell in the form of Uppsala or other center, Stan, where they uh, give out their creating of people and information system. Uh, the second power, Bok, they couldn't take because he moved back to Finland. Uh, e is this prick, which automatically moved back with him. And then we come to Uden, and now in this West system, uh, Uden become the king. Then the, the power of Ra, which is represented by Ers, the first son, by Seppo, the first son. He of moved also back in Udenma, so this one we don't find in the Western mythologies either. But we find Tur, uh, Frey and Freya. So in this Western European article system, we are still today familiar with Uden, Tur, Frey and Freya, where in the original, in uh, Udenma, 
going out to Roos land, we find uh, Hell, Bok, E, Wooden, Ra, Tour, Frey and Freya. So they use this eight and they also make exactly uh, the same system as what we had before ice time. Now, in this way, we get three article rays. So now instead of one article and ten tropical, we start to get two more article rays from these lines going out from Dan and Sven. So now after ice time, we suddenly have 13 different rays. Maybe we put this thing also that these different rays you can find out from this different head of their decoration. Yeah, so these 10 tropical rays, they have 10 different brick heads compared to this article that goes out from uh, Udenma east into Rusland. But now from the Sven and Dan, it becomes two more. So we can see 13 different decorations and people coming from this system. No? Now, slowly, slowly, they start to fill up all these lands to the west and to the east. And uh, in a couple of thousand year time, these people meet on the border, this 50 million year old tropical banner. So if we stay on the east side, there are now arctical banner meeting on this tropical banner. Um, there they don't want these systems to mix with, it, with each other. So for example in China, this emperor get the idea it could be nice to put little wall in between. No? So there you find this enormous wall north from Peking going into the west where basically stop what become like a border between the Arctic and the tropical people. Now straight after ice time when they sit on Bokland, on Gotland, the Aser, when they make again these twelve son and seven daughter, they start to send out these ten brother in between Seppo and Lemmingainen to re-establish contact with this king, this ten tropical king system that we find further south. So they send out these ten men to create this contact with them and now also um, in that way again recreate one offering system for the brain of Ukko where all these tropical people are involved again. So now this Hanuman as we call them when he goes to South Asia or this Buddha as we call him when he goes to China or Dionysus when he goes down to the Sultan and Rasul system on Creta um, and all these other, they all get, uh, they are all like messenger coming from the north who re-establish this contact with these kings. So I will take again this Hanuman with this uh, Hindistan system. Yeah? Uh, one of these ten sons go out and now when there comes a new Narkasul in India, like when the crown prince, uh, he become Narkasul, when Narkasul die, then there comes down one Hanuman, and now this Hanuman is baptizing the Narkasul, the new Narkasul. So he is serving him a little bit of this sperm. And now from this Narkasul is coming, uh, uh, he goes together with the most healthy and beauty, and create the new crown prince. Now also in this system they have harem, so they have more women by which this Narkasul with the rest of this girl are creating this Maharaja. So with this swan what become chosen in that area he only make the crown prince. Yeah, I must make little correction there. But with the harem he create all this Maharaja by which he divide all this area. Yeah. 
so this harem it is in that way like this group of these are what we have before ice time from where come this rabbi not this and siena no? but now with this harem he create all this maharaja to divide his area in now in that way from maharaja again come raja and from raja come again kar and from kar come again gati now gati the word uh, for the trail class in Ind in hindustan uh, says already what they are involved in also because ga is going and t is t now t e is t is relating to the sperm when t a t is relating to the mahla offering system so now the gati in the carnival uh, are dancing there and there is one car who is choosing one Gatti man and now straight away 50 of his friends serve to the Gatti who is chosen by the car and the car go in the offerlund uh, together with the uh, goes the car go together with that Gatti man in the offerlund and now the car is going from there to the Kapeli where he goes together with the Raja and the Raja is going to the temple together with the Maharaja. The Maharaja is going to Narkasul to his father and Mar Narkasul is giving to Hanuman who is one of these 10 tin TU, this 10 in between the first San Seppo and the 12th San Lemminkainen and now Hanuman is traveling back to Udenma and there he is serving in Valhalla to Uko. So now they have again been making this offering system complete. Yeah? They did it everywhere, all around in the tropical world after the ice time. But now straight after the ice time, 9,008 years ago, when, or 1,000 years after ice time, 9,008 years ago when they moved back to Udenma, it jumped out this to Dan and Sven, where they don't have this contact with them. So this ten brother, they go in the form of Buddha or Hanuman or Dionysus to this ten different tropical race, but not to this Western European article, because they basically been jumping out of that system. Um, They have one, one saying, what is quite nice in root language, where you come also to many of these words uh, that relate still today to this mythology. And it goes like this, I will first say it like this rhyme in root and then I can explain it to you in English. No? So it says that Han Udens Man, Hanuman, comes from Asanas Bud, Buddha, Till Asien met Udens Wisdom, Vishnu, som jör de bokken till en bra man, en god man, som skapar de goda mänskior, fylkior, valkurior. So it says that Han Uman, Han Uman, Han Udens Man, Han is he, U is Uden, Man is man. Yeah, so Han Uman is one title. He comes as a messenger, a boot is a messenger from A, from Ukko, Akka, Asa. So he comes as a Buddha to Asia, to Asia, met Uden's wisdom, uh, with the uh, wisdom of Uden, the Vishnu Pani. Yeah, so Vishnu Pani. Pani is water still today in this Hindi language. So the Vishnu Pani is this wise water that he brings from uh, Old North Pole coming down to Hindistan. No? Um, um, who made this book to be uh, a Brahman, a Brahman. Brahman is Brahmin good in uh, root language. Yeah? A good man who creates uh, good uh, people, soul and Valkyrie. Now, One second, complete blank. <laughs>
Oui. Yeah, but this we are. This. Take the title now. That is okay. You take the title from Sven. Yeah. Take the title from Narakasu and Ku to the school S and K. And you can even repeat Narakasu and Kartabu Kamuka Tabu Ka. So you can take that if you like to take this part. Or maybe we give it to Sven. <laughs> I think so. Maybe you take this Sven and Dan title for us. Mm. Well, that's it. And after you go to 862, where you make one king also rules one, to spoil the 900. Um. That line. Well, you have to tell what you feel. Yeah, yeah, but I have to order my my brain. You know, there is full chaos up there. You know, there is. <laughs> a little bit more in the areas where we are more familiar with the situation, no? Um, this, um, we now just took the system of the king system, how it works in, Indi in Hindustan. Uh, so we can go a little bit through this title, what we have, how they make it here in Western Europe, because this become copied later on. So, in Uppsala is sitting this king, uh, who create one line from Sven, where the first son become crown prince, and the crown prince become king when the king died. So they call them Kroon Prince in root, is the first son, and then all the other son that come out of the king and the queen, they get the title Hertik. So Hertik is again also again based on sound, where you can divide in her, T and G. So he have also something to do with giving T, this Hertik. Now this Hertik, they all get loud. So in Sweden we have uh, Westmanaland, who has one Hertik, we have Södermanland, who have one her Hertik, Gotland have one Hertik, Norland have one Hertik, Småland have one Hertik. So all this area is divided in different land where there is one Hertik, who become our father to the people, in that way that he is making children with the Jarl woman, and there the Jarl is again making children with the Kar woman, and from the car are coming the trail. So it's exactly the same system again. And that is going on all the time through the heathen time, based on this king system coming out from Dan and Sven everywhere in Europe. So also in England, where you have them as crown prince and duke. Yeah, so the first son is the crown, crown prince, and he become the king in the future. And also England is divided in different areas, where dukes are ruling, and there the dukes make children with the earls, and the earl with the car, and the car with the trail. It's only that these associations of words don't exist anymore today, because one car has become one automobile, and one trail has become one path in the forest. No? But anyway, they have still these words, but they've in the time been creating new association to them. Um, now when these Western article people are slowly moving to the south and they on the border of um, South Europe, which is this Pyrenees Alps to the Black Sea, when they come down there, they have contact with this Rasul and Sultan system that goes out from Creta. So on Crete, uh, Crete is one island outside of Hellas, which is divided in two because we have the meridian that comes from North Pole going over hell to the south, 
to South Pole. And when you follow this meridian, you see that this line divides Creta in Middle East and Middle West. Yeah. Now in Middle East is sitting Sultan, and in Middle West is sitting the Rasul system, who create all people west towards the Atlantic, and in the East the Sultan, all the way to Narkasul, to the Hindustan system. <coughs> now when they see this king system that rolls out from Dan and Sven, who are doing all this trip on their own, they get also inspiration on that island, and Rasul and Sultan, they decide to move away from this island. So we get Sultan moving to Istanbul, again E, and Stan means in one center, and Bul, Bal, again relating to all this machinery. And this Rasul, he is moving to Rome. So now we get two center who move away from this island and create their own center separate from this uh, heathen system rolling out through this Hanuman and Buddhas and Dionysus. Now this Dionysus is always coming to Creta, to Crete, to make the contact between Rasul and Sultan and the North. But now when they move away from there, also they are not being served anymore by this Dionysus figure, one of these ten brothers in between the first and the twelfth one. Uh, so they also jumped out of the system in the same way like Sven and Dan did. So now they also copy that system from Dan and Sven in exactly the same way. Um, then we get uh, two new centers, Istanbul and Rome. And now we come to one period where uh, these people in the time has been getting one uh, more business-like system which is what is based on a written system. It is not anymore so much to do with, uh, uh, with this hidden system of creating children and one life around that. It become all kind of other story that starts to be more important than this principle where the highest thing you could be was one father for a man or for a woman to be one mother. And there we start in the time to get change and we can go into all these uh, different aspects later on. No? But I will first make uh, this story to roll to an end so you get an idea of how this whole system of making children, what we had before, collapsed in the time. Um, yes, this creates that when Rasul and Sultan move away from this island Creta, um, before they were based from this center, creating all people around the Mediterranean. But now, when they move north to the Mediterranean, they are not anymore involved in this children-making system on the south side, on the African side. So there becomes like a hole. There is nobody who is anymore making children in that region. So we come to that point that they decide from the north to send one guy to Egypt to create one new system where he become king and uh, create people in this area what now has a vacuum. Before these people live all according to this association based on this children making system, but when this Rasul and Sultan moved away to the northern side of the Mediterranean, Nobody was anymore making children on the southern side of the Mediterranean. It's become like almost an empty space. So, from Udenma, they sent one of the more than 12 sons down to Egypt to start again one, uh, one people creating system in that area to have anyway people there. Now, this become in the time the pharaoh or based on this Far Raouden. Far is the father figure. The father is Far, yeah, who has this Ra uh, in the sperm, what is representing U, Uden, and Uden Ma, and all this system of uh, of, uh, um, of Lemminkainen and Jotzen there in 
in uh, Africa. Now here is article, so we get in that area of Egypt, we get one article, Al Father, what makes that these people in that area also become more light than these tropical people. The same is happening with this Rasul who moved in Rome and the Sultan who moved to Istanbul, who create one harem out of this article girl from the north. So they collect article girl and with this harem they create uh, this uh, different class of people so that also in the Mediterranean the people become more blonde or more light I should say than the uh, tropical people. <clears throat> Now, that system go on there, on the south, with this pharaoh, uh, up, up to about the year 400, and the same, this Rasul and Sultan system is working up to the year 400, where now, in the meantime, in this business that has been created between this Rasul, uh, Sultan and this pharaoh there, uh, is a change occurring. Already long before that time, anyway, this pharaoh from the beginning uh, has been an original system, but he also break out from that uh, Udenma system that was connected with Hanuman in that time when he started to make pyramids. In the time he started to make pyramids, they create one system where they put them all in boxes, in sarcophag. So they didn't anymore burn the people after they died, so the Fulgia would go under the tree or in some system in the nature back to uh, the nature in its totality. Now they start to put people in sarcophag, and when you make people in sarcophag, it means the, the Fulgia cannot leave from the body. Okay, it's the same like when you burn and you put the ash in like a metal box which is completely closed in that way the fulgia cannot go back to to the nature so you keep uh, all this energy in boxes no? so they were very fond of that in this uh, later uh, pharaoh culture what was not anymore connected to this udenma system so they also break out from that now all these people there, they get different inspiration and start to base things more and more on one writing system and one business, where in the year 400, this group of people who was more involved in this writing system create one new information system that takes over the power from what we would call today the Roman Imperium. Yeah, the Roman Imperium was divided in one West system and one East, east system, West based on Rasul, East based on Sultan. But now this new writing system is taking over the information system and they create something like church from where the uh, information is now reaching the people in different ways in Europe and around the Mediterranean. So this Rasul family system, it become put on the side in the western area, but in the eastern area, this Sultan, whose first son becomes Sultan, who's, from whose the first son again becomes the Sultan, they create one inherited system of giving out information, where on the west side, they make one elected system to give out the information. So in this new church information system, the Sultan, is the head of the East Roman Church and has an inherited, uh, has, is, has the title as an inherited right, where the Pope, who become head of the Western Church, have this right uh, through election. So it is not a family story. Now this West uh, Roman Imperium creates uh, take over the whole Roman Imperium that was uh, practically going along the Danube, uh, the Rhine and up to the south of England. So in one time all this system falls over to a completely new information system. So they didn't anymore have this center uh, for making children like Colosseum in Rome, this big Rusty, 
where people met and received information in the heathen time, uh, where they had all this glad iatur. No? Uh, this glad means happy, uh, e is e, e uh, a is aser, and tour means uh, the heart, the heart friend. So this gladiator is this guy who come in there on this wagon with this sword, no? and there is all these women sitting there who can choose from this different gladiator uh, which one could be suitable to be father. No? So that was the principle in the heathen time. And now this whole system is collapsing and it comes a new information system based on Pope who now in written form give out information through the cardinals and the monks who is right, the moon cara, the monks who are writing this information system in Latin language and transferring it to the archbishops in the different regions in Western Europe. Now the archbishop, he has Munkara monks who are again writing these letters for bishops. So they go into different areas of the countries. And now the bishops write letters for the vicar, and the vicar uh, write, uh, sends them on to the priests who get all this information in Latin language. Now in that way, this priest is ending up in the church, reading this Latin, but can translate it in his own brain to the language the local spe people speak in that area where he keeps his sermons. So in that way, on Sunday, every everybody became informed through this letter system of what the Pope in Rome was saying. So the 10 o'clock news came by letter from Rome. Um, now slowly, slowly, this system starts to eat further north into England and into Holland and direction Scandinavia. So these Viking people from Dan and Sven, who is living there in uh, northwestern Europe, they start to get very nervous about this situation. Because they see they uh, start to be a little bit out, a uh, little bit ex little bit out from all this situation there. They didn't really feel so much for it. So also the year 400, when this Roman Imperium collapsed and the church basically take over the information system, um, this Gotland was belonging up to that time to Udetma, this island south from Stockholm. So in that time the Danish Viking take over Gotland. So now Gotland become a part of Denmark from the year 400 to uh, 862. Now Gotland is one interesting place because it is not in Udenma, it is outside of Udenma, but anyway, up to 400, it is completely run by the Aser. And it is a station where through... Um, it is a center from where goods were spread that arrived from the tropics. So before we had this different route by which we have contact and transfer goods uh, from Asia to Europe. And from China, we have one thing, what we call Silk Road, leading west. And from the Spice Islands in Southeast Asia, uh, coming to Hindustan, we have one road that we call the... Who has the word? Yeah, this caravan route. The Spice Road and the other one, what is it called? Huh? The Silk Route. Ah, the, the Silk Route, yeah, and the Spice Route. No? Right. So this go by caravan. Now they have one center in South Asia called uh, Vijayanagar or Hampi, where all this good that come from the Spice Island and from the southern part of, of Hindustan uh, are centered. And from there transported by elephant to the castles of, or to the red forts in Agra, Delhi and Jaipur. So there is an enormous elephant uh, road uh, traffic going on there in thousands of years time by which they transport all these goods to the north of India, to north of Hindustan, to Delhi, Agra and Jaipur from where they transport all these goods by caravan uh, with camels to the uh, Kasper Sea and the Black Sea. Now from there they could bring it up, these goods, by what are called Laksurm Botar, um, flat bottom boats over the Russian river system uh, to the East Sea in the north. 
Now along these Russian river systems you have this kind of cataracts, uh, places where you can't sail through uh, with these boats or row through with these boats. So in all these kind of places you get um, you get like small centers by which people can help to transport these boats from one part of the river to the next part of the river. In that way Kiev and Moscow have been coming into creation. Now from there they can go further over this river system and they end up in Daluga, what today we call Ladoga. I wait a little bit for this machine. I can't make concurrence with the aeroplane. Yeah. Mm. Now, <coughs> Daluga is one big inland sea. Dal is like one day, U is U and Ga has been going. You know? So they, have, they are coming up in Daluga and from there they go over Bana River and they come where, to that place where today is Petersburg into the East Sea. And then they pass through the archipelago of uh, East Udenma, West Udenma, um, in the direction of today's Sweden, ending up in Gotland. Now from Gotland, the Asen distribute all this good uh, to the people in uh, Middle West uh, Europe. So everybody, anyway, even in the time when they are already disconnected from this ASA system, are still being provided by all kinds of articles what uh, we don't have in this article culture. Now in the year 400, when the Danish Viking take over this uh, route that up to that time was, con was run by the ASA from Gotland through Uden Ma East, uh, they take over uh, and make like a business out of it, where they make ready-produced article in one center in Denmark called Hedebu, and from there it goes all to Gotland, and now it goes starts a traffic the other way around, where they start to take incredible amount of this article good and shipping them down to uh, the Sultan system, where they exchange them for gold and silver and all kind of artifact and bring it back up. No? Um, That is 400 to 7, 862, it happened this situation. Now in the meantime, this Viking starts 789, one attack on the churches in England. Because they find out that this new information system uh, isolates them completely from everything else, their area becomes smaller and smaller because already this church information system has been making a complete different structure in the creating of human being in this part of Europe, like it had already been happening a couple of thousand years before in Asia. But we concentrate for the moment a little bit on Europe, that's where we are. So in this new church information system, now the trail boy, they get the right to make children. So now we get one class of people who are completely in themselves. Now the car boy and girl start to make children, the yarl boy and girl start to make children. So now we get one system where all these castes are not anymore uh, lower and higher in that form that it was your father was one caste over you, your grandfather was one caste over you. Now it is one system where we become like family within one caste, you know, separate caste. So we lose the connection between each other. Um, the Viking, they still had like this culture based on this Hertik, uh, Jarl, Karl and Trail. And now they see that everywhere in their more southern system that originated out of them in Middle Europe has become this new system. Yeah, what is based on the church information. Now they didn't feel so much for that, so they start attacks on the churches in England in 789, and they destroy a little bit there, but in the end anyway, the church that established itself around 600, already quite okay in England, uh, managed to go on with their information system. So also England 
become part of this information system run from Rome. Um, it makes that the Viking didn't have so much to do anymore in England. So they start in the year 845. Uh, to make a little bit larger attack. So one of them, um, called Ragnar Ludbrook, he is going to Middle Europe, to Paris, with one big bunch of Viking in boat, and there they uh, ransack Paris, you know, and they take big amount of silver uh, for uh, in ransom for to split again. Now this guy, he has one son, this Ragnar Ludbrook, who ten years later on uh, get similar idea as his father. This guy is called Björn Jansiede and he is going 855 and following in the footstep of his father and he starts also to destroy there no? and he's collecting all gold and silver from the church but then he is not happy with that he starts to go further south along the coast of France and Portugal and everywhere where they see one church, they start to destroy and, and collect all these artifacts that are in this church. And goes around uh, Spain and up the river of Guadalquivir and through Gibraltar and up to the Balear and Barcelona. And he goes up to uh, Narbonne and Avignon and everywhere where they come, they make chaos in this information system of Pope and everywhere they rob this gold and silver. Now, after he split from Avenue, he get the idea that he wants to pay visit to Pope in Rome. So they start to come down the Italian coast, and then they see one big white marble town, and they think now they are in Rome. But when they land there, they find out it was not Rome, it was Luna. And they get so angry about that that they destroy completely this town. No? Now, in the meantime, they've been collecting so many gold and silver, they came with 62 boats, and all this boat, they was completely full with this material. So now they have an enormous problem, because with all this metal in their boat, they can't move so fast. Nose oh, itchy. They can't move so fast, so they know that when they now go, go back through the Mediterranean to reach the Atlantic, they have to pass, pass the Strait of Gibraltar, and that for sure will be lying one fleet of all these people who they've been robbing empty uh, to beat them a little bit in the head, no? So now this Björn Jans, he, he do, does one trick and sails with his boats to Egypt, to Alexandria, and there he melts everything down. All these objects become melted down, and now they transport them from Egypt up to the Black Sea, and then with his flat bottom boats over the Russian river system, through Daloga and Bano to the Finnish Gulf and then down to Gotland. So he has nothing in his boat when he come back with his 62 ship going through the Strait of Gibraltar, uh, where of course there is this whole fleet waiting for them. No? Anyway, they come uh, in the form of one uh, V, like the birds are flying full speed, they go through this blockade and in that blockade he lose more than half of his ship. So he is so pissed off from that, this Björn Jans here, that he lands again in, in Portugal or in Spain and he takes ransom the king of Asturias and he extracts from there still an enormous amount of gold and silver. And then he has been seven years on the way, it's now the year 862, and he decides to split back to uh, Sweden. So he comes in Gotland. Um, is he one Danish Jarl or one Swedish? This Björn Jan, Danish, Swedish. He's one Swedish Jarl, and now he comes back to um, to Gotland in the year 862. And in the meantime, over this river system through Russia, has been arriving all this gold and silver. So now he has so much gold and silver, this guy, that in Sweden he becomes straight away declared to be king. So before you have this Unglinghead, you have all the time this Unglinghead line, this family line that rolls out from Sven 
since 9,008 years ago. But now, in the meantime, the whole system been changing so much that when you arrive with gold and silver, uh, you can become king like that. No? So this Unglinge at king, uh, he becomes practically thrown out, and now Björn Jansiede is king in Sweden, although he is from a Jarl family, no? which is something completely new. Now, when this Unglinge at king becomes thrown out, in the meantime in Russia, they have also been getting all kinds of problems because there has been interacting of the people from the tropical and the arctical and all this system has been starting to eat in each other and there has been coming a quite big chaos although still all these people are being created through this rabi in this different ring land that they have there but they don't anymore follow the system so incredibly um, then in Rusland uh, arrives this Unglinge at King, who is now thrown out practically by this Bjorn Jansiede to make a bit of organization and uh, create one center from Novgorod where they make in Rusland organization according to this Unglinge at King uh, from Sweden. So it starts there one period uh, called uh, Gar uh, Gordarika Rusland, no? one garden empire Rusland there, where this Unglinge at King is uh, having control of the information system. Now he stays there for one period, he gets two sons and one of them um, goes away from Rusland, becomes educated in Udenma and when Björn Jan see the die, this first son from this Unglinge at King comes back to uh, Uppsala and become again king in Sweden, just like the old system from before. And his second son is Ivan, Ivan the first, and he become uh, ruler in, in Rusland. Now, out of this Ivan is coming different people, different line, and one of them in the year uh, 987, is marrying with the sister of the Sultan in Istanbul. Now, the, the Sultan in Istanbul, he is the head of the Greek Orthodox information system. So when this Vladimir, who is via via coming out of this Unglinge at uh, second son line, that become like king or ruler in Rusland, um, when he married with the sister of the emperor in Istanbul, uh, was one sign that in that same moment or an acceptance of the Greek Orthodox information system. So this ruler in Russia, in Rusland, they've been looking long time whether to join now in this Roman Catholic information system or in this Greek Orthodox information system. But through this marriage, uh, they consent to this Greek Orthodox system. So 987, whole Gordarika Rusland become part of the Greek Orthodox information system. Now in that moment, the Azer in Udenma, they find out that this is the time uh, to close the temple that again had been opened after ice time when these new ringlands were created, where again these people bring up from this different ringland in Rusland where there were all these Rabi, they brought back this beautiful handicraft aesthetic to put in the storehouse of the temple in appreciation of this uh, system rolling out from Uko and Akka. Uh, 987 they closed the temple because they could see that slowly slowly the things are changing because also after these attacks from Björn Jansiede on the west side and his father Ragnar Ludbrook, anyway the church slowly moved up on the western side of Europe anyway and is eating into this Viking system. They come into Holland, they come into northern Germany, into Denmark, into Norway and now in the year 1008 uh, also the king in Sweden, uh, he become crowned by the bishop in Sigtuna. And this king was Olof Schöthkung, who by letting himself being crowned by the bishop of Sigtuna, also accept the information system of the Pope in Rome. 
So the year 1008, Sweden has become a part of the Roman Catholic information system and already 987, Gorda Rika Ruslan become part of the Greek Orthodox information system. So now there is only this original one sitting there in the north in the forest of Finland. So it's only a question of time to see who comes first. No? So they closed this temple 987 and now in the year 1050 uh, starts the third Ragnarök. So we had the first Ragnarök when the axle of earth shift, we had the second Ragnarök when the ice time finished, when Atlantis period finished, and now we come to the third destruction of this Asa system, which occurs on the 24th of July 1050, when this Pope in Rome has been recruiting one army in the center of Europe, in Helvetia and Germany, where they sent up one army of mercenary and shipped them in in uh, around Lübeck, Hamburg, somewhere along the East Sea, and shipped them to uh, Orland, Achvenema, a group of islands between uh, Stockholm and the southwest coast of Finland. Uh, in that way, they bypassed all these people living inside in Sweden, so nobody there ever knew that there had been one army passing along the water to this island group that belonged to Finland, where now this army, when they land, kill all these Vaner that live on this island. Because these islands are outside from Udenma, between Sweden and Finland. So all people there become killed, and on the 24th of July they make one big ring around Udenma, and then they kill all the Asen. And they cut all the oak tree that was there, that become burnt in the next year. And they take all the objects, all the construction, but all artifacts that were there in hell, like from the information system of Uko and Akka or on Uden's Earth, uh, the center island from where all this creating of people and giving out of information to people is starting. Um, they take all the objects and in the autumn, when there come ice, on the Gulf of Finland, between uh, the south coast and Estonia, they bring all these objects on the ice and leave them there, so that in the spring, when the ice melts, whole hell fall to the bottom of the Finnish Gulf. Um, anyway, they've been expecting this situation in Udenma, so 1050. Um, this uh, pirouette family they decide that it is time to pack our suitcase and split to the forest in Lapland. And uh, they went up to the north, where now this Ukko and, uh, and Akka and the family moved to Korvatunturi, one mountain on the border of Lapland and uh, Rusland. And the first son and the first daughter, Seppo and Maya, they moved to Kaljale Puri today called Kajani, one uh, castle on one island in the river five, six hundred kilometers north from hell. Now there they are in a small way continuing the system in the north uh, from the year 1050 up to the year 1250. Now in this period where this Uko is living in Lapland he is not anymore going around with eight goat, eight bock in front of one wagon. He now changed to reindeer because they are more suitable in that climate up there. So this um, Uko, he become necklace and become very famous in that way as this Father Christmas figure that we are all so familiar with. It is basically the period that Uko and Akka are staying for 200 years in Lapland from where we have the association of the Santa Claus figure with his red hat with the white dot uh, and this two white ring around the arm uh, who because he is neck class no? yeah? neck class, we from neck class we have this neck class, tour class and liu class who are these three bok who are performing or these three car who are performing as this bok in the circus, in the theater in the Rasti, still from before ice time no? So we have this name Nicholas, Nicholas, 
uh, from where we get all the Santa Claus uh, necklace feeling from, no? the story from. Now this necklace, is a quite uh, funny character, uh, this Father Christmas figure, because he is walking around uh, with all this nice symbolic around him. Yeah? He is still today coming uh, and bringing, uh, bringing the presents to the children. Um, but there is a little bit more behind this figure anyway, if you go in the symbolic. If you see him, he has always this red hat, which is again like this red hat, what he have in his trouser, and the white dot is the sperm that come out from it. Now Uko, he have always two white rings around his arm, so in his red dress with the white belt, you find also these two white rings, but now in the form of manchette. Then he has in his right hand, he has a staff and a sack, and in the sack are all these presents. And now the staff is symbolizing his breeding equipment, and this sack he have below, and in this sack is this sperm uh, from where before all these people was born in this system when he was our father. So he is actually the bringer of the nature gift. Yeah, he create all these different people who where every people has one own nature gift that make him to be that character that he or she is. No. So Santa Claus, he is the bringer of the nature gift, where he have them all in this sack. Now in the left hand, he has the sunflower seed. Yeah? Now we know the sun, we know all the story of sun, and we know that sun and, and lightning and fire and sperm and gold are all symbolizing aspects of, are all aspects of wood, and we all put them in the same category. So when he has the sunflower seed, which he throw out uh, is basically that way, in that way symbolizing the spreading of people around the planet. Now he stay up there in Korva up to 1250. Uh, and in the meantime, in this period, have been starting all kinds of crusades in Finland, where, um, because now 1050, Finland has become a part of Sweden. So the agreement between the church uh, and the king of Sweden was that when he come over with the bishop to meet this army that come from the middle of Europe on the islands between Sweden and Finland and making one ring around Udenma to destroy that, that Finland would become a part of Sweden. So in that way, when he come over, this king to, to do this thing. This king he is called uh, Anund Jacob and uh, he uh, come over to Udenma 24 of 7 but now already 25 of 7 he become killed. <laughs> so he never come back to Sweden, it's only the bishop who come back to Sweden and in Sweden he is very well known, this character in the history book as King Anund Helbrennare meaning the burner of hell, no? when you translate it. Uh, he's in the history book appearing there, and after that they start all kind of crusade in order to make these people to move Sunday morning in the church to listen to what Pope in Rome is saying. So they start the first one, 1157, and then they have another one, 1248, with Birger Jarl, an advisor to the king in Sweden. And now Birger Jarl, he is going first. Uh, uh, he is going first to uh, the north, to Kajani, and there he is speaking with Seppo to say that what do we do now? As long as your system is continue, he have order from the Pope to go around to cut off the head from the people if they don't want to go and listen to the information of Pope in the church. So then they make one agreement that they stop all this uh, creating of people and information system in the year 1248 and not talk about it anymore until this 10,000 year period after the ice time is finished. Yeah. So today we are in 10,008, so 10,000 year ago, 10,000 year after ice time, eight years ago, 1984, 
up to that time they wouldn't talk anymore about this story of how to create people and one information system that has been existing before the time of the information system coming from Rome. So they shake hand on that, 1248, and now this Birjal is going east to the Vana River where he is meeting the Grand Duke of uh, Rusland. Um, called Alexander. So Alexander and Birjal, they are meeting on the Bana River and there they decide that this river become the border between the Roman Catholic information system and the Greek Orthodox information system. And in that ceremony they change the Bana River to Neva, as it is still called, the river going to Ladoga, from Petersburg to Ladoga. Yeah, so where today is Petersburg. No? So that place become the border between the Greek Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. And uh, in that uh, ceremony, um, Alexander, he get one title, Nevsky, because Neva, you know, Nevsky, there is the key, the lock to this border between, well, a symbolic between Roman Catholic and Greek Orthodox. Now in that way, uh, Seppo and Maya, they decide to stop, hold their circus up there in the north. And in that way, they get the right from Birjerial to move down to Udenman again and stay there quietly. And they get the right as in the family for the Yest Yivri, like one inn system where along roads you have different inn uh, where these people are basically the organizer of the traffic inside in Finland. Now, in 1250, they move down to Udenma, so there it finish. All this system in the north, 100%. Um, in this hidden culture, they had these three bok who represent these three different uh, masculine characters there, that they always used in different ceremonies. Now two of them, they buried under oak trees in Tuna, uh, that center outside from Rasapuri, in a nature place in one Offerlund. Under, uh, in the Offerlund, bur they buried two of these oak trees, uh, two of this bog, and put oak tree over them. And now the third one they took with them in this 200 year period, between 1050 and 1250, in Kayani. So 1250, when they decide that they stop all this system, they make in the deepest point of the bedrock on this island where this castle is built, they put this third bog and in this well, and then they closed this well, took the ring around the way, so you can't never find out anymore that there has been a well. So in the courtyard of the castle in Kayani, there is buried the third bog. So now everything stored away, temple has been closed 987, all box put in the ground and now it's only to be quiet for a long period until they can again talk about this thing. But in the meantime moving back to Udenma where they get this yes givri right, this guest giving right in the transportation system from the Swedish king or the advisor of the Swedish king. Now. In the year 1523, there comes a new king in Sweden, and this guy, he is called Gustav Vasa. And Gustav Vasa, when he become king, he wants to change a little bit the system that has been going up from 1008 in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden. Because from 1008, all kings in Sweden are... Uh, are like presented by are elected by pope so they are or not elected by pope but they are like the headman of the Jarl family who come together and in this meeting of all the headmen of the Jarl they decide one who become king now 1061 the last member of this Umlinge at king line in Sweden um, 
he decided that he has had enough of this new information system. He doesn't want to continue as king under one pope. So he go with his crown prince to add the stupa. They make suicide and in that way this um, this Ungling at King line from Sven die out. So after that it start this uh, election of Jarl uh, of which of Jarl Hetman of which one become king with the permission of the Pope. Now this Gustav Vasa he get uh, he get fed up of that system so he wants again to make one inherited system. But he can never do that without to throw out the Pope. So that is something he does in the year 1527 and establish himself as head of the church in Sweden. So now from 1527 he sits there without any Pope system, is head by himself and starts to give out the information in written form to the priest in the church through his archbishop, bishop, uh, vicar, uh, to the priest who reads this letter for the people in the church in Sweden but now also to the people in the church in Finland uh, in Ban language <coughs> uh, in the meantime um, I shouldn't go in all this detail right now we can take that out afterwards I want to come to 1550 where uh, in 1540 already he has been establishing an inherited system. So his first son, Eric XIV, is now the crown prince and become king when Gustav Vasa died. No? And Gustav Vasa, 1550, on the old hell uh, in Udenma, is creating one new center. Because in Udenma, when the Asar had been living, that all those who escaped had been living in the forest uh, with the Finnish people together and they now slowly slowly after this 1250 1248 agreement are starting to move back into Udenma and it creates two centers one around the ruin of Rasapuri that has been destroyed in this third Ragnarök where they have been killing all this Azer and destroying all Udenma and another center is in the east of Udenma uh, Sibosbori now these two centers are two different bureaucrat centers for East Ud for East Udenma and for West Udenma. So now this Gustav Vasa he create one new center by combining these two bureaucracies on the old hell from 1050. So there he create one new town Helsinki, what become uh, the information center in Gustav Vasa time for all these people in Finland. Yeah, I think there we are in the creation of Helsinki on the old hell. And then we have these Finnish people living under the Swedish information system of the king in Sweden in Stockholm up to the year 1809. And 1809 Finland become a part of Rusland. And that